Hello everyone, Russell from Domain Web Studio Network Empire Theme Zoom, and I've been up all night, but <laughs> I'm really glad to be doing this webinar because when we're up all night, that means that we're adding really cool stuff, and I'm struggling to keep on top of what Matt and Sue are doing because it's just literally the coolest thing ever. It just keeps me so excited. and. Um, and so I'm late, and I apologize. And thank you for those of you who stayed with us for that five minutes. I had some technical difficulty. And uh, so we're going to jump right in. And I'm, I just want to point out that we have questions at the end of our uh, webinar. And that's usually what excites people the most, because it's a time for you to ask us questions that we don't normally, you know, it's not an, normally we aren't able to interact with you guys. And it's been really, really helpful because people have asked some great questions. So um, if you stick through to the end, I really appreciate it. And that will help us help you and create better features and functionality of the software. So with that, no further ado, I will step out of the way and let Matt's going to be uh, doing this presentation, right, Sue? Or? Yes. OK, and let Matt DeCruz, is the co-inventor of the Domain Web Studio application, jump right in. And thanks, Matt. Thanks, Russ. Uh, can you all guys all hear me fine? Everything good there? Um, yeah, what I'd like to do is just welcome you all on this call today. And um, what I'm going to do today is get in this webinar, I really want to get right down into actually building out a site for you guys with DWS and do more building than talking. And while I'm working, I'm going to actually share what I'm doing with you. But uh, before I start, um, where we're going with DWS is we're actually going to, we, we're, building the, we're building networks, broadcasting networks. That's where we're going. And with this presentation, I'm going to start with the end in the mind. So um, with the end in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the, the, um, the promotion and syndication screen, explain it to you, and then from there we're going to hop to the beginning and actually run through a project where I take a sample file I've taken out of Market Samurai as an example, because I know some people use it, and I'm going to show you one or two of the other tools and the differences, and then I'm going to actually map out a website live, and you'll see how I import things and how I work with them. So, like I said, we're going to flip the story on its head, we're going to show you the end result, and essentially this is going to be the end result for every single page within your website, okay? So, if the green dot is one page in your website, you will create rankings from search engines to that page, as well as you have traffic and backlinks coming from all the social platforms around the web in different multimedia types, okay? So, what you essentially going to be doing is you're creating a synonymic network that has targeted web traffic and pushes page links through your entire website. And this is what we're going to do with the promotion and syndication. So, with our broadcasting network, we're going to get building uh, and looking at syndication and promotion, here are the pains that we've removed. So, the first one is there's no more spreadsheets and no more trying to figure out what to do next. DWS does this all for you, step by step, and takes you through the entire process. So essentially what we've got here is a process that has got a horizontal process, which is our production line, and then we've got a vertical process, which is where we can zoom in and out right to granular levels of things. So if we're working by ourselves, we can draw right down into the task we have to do, do it, and then move on to the next task. If we're working with a team or multiple people around the world, we can actually zoom out and see what they're all doing at once. When they log into their screen, they just see the work they have to do with. So it sort of works well with everybody. There's no more losing control of your team. No more getting lost in specific promotion tasks. No more forgetting which anchor text to use. Now, with DWS, what we've built into um, the system, in the promotion part of the system, is an auto anchor text management system. So, what it does is it'll take your DNA braid, the synonymic set that you design specific to a page, and it'll manage that anchor text allocation for you. So, you don't actually have to even think about what anchor text do I use now? The system actually adjusts it and picks the best keyword for you. So there's no more optimization penalties. And there's a lot of chatter about over-optimization penalties. And with DWS, you don't really have to concern yourself too much with this because essentially you're building a synonymic network. And what the, the left hand sees, the right hand also sees. Okay, And what page A is about, page B, supports page A and the anchor text, which is the bridge between point A and point B, that is synonymously relevant. So you're actually doing everything that the search engines are looking for. But also you, you're giving the customers 
the the connections they need to actually follow where you're taking them as you take them through your sales funnel. There's no more losing track of files, tasks, or people. No more losing promotional and some social account details. No more using dangerous bots to leave footprints everywhere like SNU, Magic Submitter, and the like. Okay. Now I use these tools. I use SNU. I use Magic Submitter. And I'm not saying the tools are bad. I'm just saying if you don't know how to use the tools, they're dangerous. Okay, you actually leave a big footprint, and this is what causes problems. There's a place for bots, but most people use them in the wrong place. That's all I'm saying there. Right. So this is a brief overview of the actual workflow or the process you would go through from the syndication and the promotion to actually get to this point. And what I'll do after this screenshot here is I'm actually going to jump into the system and show you how we get to be at this point. But what DWS does is once we've built our site and we've got live, the, the promotion module essentially creates your whole battle plan from a promotion across all multimedia types. You can then assign tasks either to your writer or yourself who will then write the promotional content. Once he's written the multimedia content and then all the multimedia parts are created, that goes through a quality control check. Okay. Now, if you're checking other people's work, because DWS is an outsourcing system as well, if you're not happy with the quality, you can push it straight back to the writer and have that rebuilt and repurposed. Okay. If it qualifies and passes, then it automatically it falls into the person who's going to promote the content. Now, this person will go into one of the web properties, take that content, that media type, and they'll actually publish it to the web. That's why the quality control is so important because if you are pushing your brand through the web, you don't want to push rubbish quality where your brand's tied to. Okay? So once that's done and the person who's published it has basically signed off that he has to do it, he needs to just grab the URL, drop it into DWS saying, I've done the job, this is where I posted it. That then automatically falls into the one feature to rule them all. And DWS creates the uh, RSS feed for you automatically, which takes this content and it pushes it through the one feed system and that automatically broadcasts your message across the web which the search engines pick up and then they drive more traffic to you. So you'll get traffic from the search engines on multiple search engine types and you'll get traffic from multiple publishing places where you're publishing your video, your podcasts, your PDFs, your PowerPoint presentations, your, um, your articles, your blog posts, your forum chatter, your social groups, everything that you're doing is specifically designed through the promotional planner to drive qualified traffic and leads back into your business. Now, the most important part of this whole process is that backlinks now become a byproduct of your promotional activities. They're no longer the forefront focus, which has caused so much problems in the SEO world. Okay, so let's go and build a site quickly, and I'm going to show you we're going to build a little niche site and how we're going to get to this point. Okay. So here we are. We are on the promotional screen in DWS. And as I scroll up, you'll see we are basically sitting at the promotional plan screen over here. And the way this works is here we can see our silos, our categories, and our promotional supporting articles. Sorry, not promotional articles, our supporting articles. And that's a whole blueprint we built out. Um, this project that we're dealing with here is about house clearance. Now, for the exercise today, I'm actually going to go and go to another website I'm building that's dealing in, this, that's in the same market, but it's professional cleaning. And I'll show you how we can actually rapidly build out two or three websites so we can start swallowing up the market and dominating a whole market. Okay. So, what happens is when we come to the stage and we create a promotional blueprint, the promotional blueprint tells us month by month, week by week, and gives us a forecast for a year in advance of all the tasks we have to do. It shows us by the red line what new content is going to cost us, and if we repurpose our content, how much money we're going to save. Okay, we can see it by the month, the dates, how many tasks we have to do for the month, what new content is going to cost us, what the repurposed content is going to cost us, and then what the savings are. So you can actually see how we make savings as we move through the promotions. Then. Our promotion type, we get to see how we're going to be promoting our stuff across the web. We can see by the place, month by month, forums, articles, blogs, social groups, and then forums again. The amount of tasks, the costs, the savings. And if you look at this very carefully, what you're going to see is a lot of social signals that are going off. Okay, 
And this is what the search engines are looking for. They're looking for traffic coming back to your website. They're looking for people interacting with your property. This is what they want. They're tired of seeing blogs, things just lying there and dying. And in some tracking experiments I've been doing over the last few months, I've actually noticed that websites that stand and become stagnant actually are starting to degrade. So it's almost as if there's a life cycle or a lifetime limit on a website. If it stands still for a certain period of time, there's no activity and the site's actually dead, what happens is that site starts dying and starts slowly dropping out of the, the search engine rankings by default. Now, as we scroll in a bit more, you can see how month by month we've got all these tasks and activities. As we scroll on more, we'll come to the actual keyword. And what DWS does here is it shows you how your keyword promotions may be. So we always get this wedge shape promotion where the, the lower hanging fruits typically get ranked much quicker and their task activities are much less. And as we stack it down, this is where we start really addressing getting ranked for the top level keywords of the markets. So at the end there, we've got um, mini skip higher, which is a big keyword if you're targeted. Okay. Now, there we can see keyword by keyword, month by month, week by week, how many promotions we're going to do. Now, you're probably wondering how long did this all take to create a promotional plan of this caliber telling us exactly what we need to do for each keyword. And all it is, is basically simply selecting the keyword you want to promote and pressing a button. And once you've done that, DWS within seconds generates and builds us all out. Okay, so this is a really, really, really powerful feature because there's no more ambiguity. There's no one wondering, oh, what do I do next? It's just you create your plan. And this plan is not the same plan that gets created every single time. This plan is customized to the exact blueprint that you have mapped out. So if you want to have one keyword that you want to promote, okay, you can just add it one keyword to DWS. You can skip everything else and hop to your promotional plan. And all you have to do is create your synonymic net for promoting a one keyword website and generate a promotional plan just for that one keyword. If you've got a 2000 market domination keyword blueprint, you can go silo by silo, uh, keyword by keyword, and you actually work your way through the whole promotion and work this over a period of time and slowly swallow that whole market up. The system merges around what you're doing and it works with you. So it doesn't matter how small you want to promote, how big you want to do, the system caters to what your requirements are. Um, so I know that you're very passionate about this module. Would you like to just have something to say on, on, on this year as well before I move on? Sue, are you online? I guess yeah, I was, I was I was muted. I was okay. busy talking and didn't, then I realized I was muted. Sorry. Okay, the, no the one thing that I would share Sorry. is that uh, um, this huge project that Matt and I are working on, it's got like 2,000 keywords in the, the entire DNA. And we're just getting to that point where we need to generate the promotional blueprint. And if I, I was looking at that thinking that if I had to do that by hand, I would just... I'd rather jump off of a towel building than try and figure out right. how to promote all of those keywords and, and make sure that I was hitting all the keywords and doing it in a systematic manner and, and this just does it all for me and I love it because of that. So that's all I would share. Cool. Okay. Right. Um, Rush, do you want to say something before I move nope, on? No, nope, go for it. Right. So. This is the end result. We want to get to this point and we want to get our website live. The sooner you get your website live, the sooner and closer you are to actually getting success and getting results. So spending hours and days and months trying to plan for the perfect website, it's better just to go and build your first silo, map it out, get your website live, get it indexed and start the promotion, then come back and then build the next perfect blueprint for the next perfect silo. But at least your site's live, at least there's some things happening there, at least they're starting to get promoted, at least you're getting close to get ranked. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually build this out. So yeah, we've got a reference point for house clearance. Now I'm going right back to the beginning of the system to home. And this is where it all begins, okay? Our end goal is to get our site live and start promoting it. That's when we're going to make conversions. That's when we're going to sell things and that's when we're going to make money. So we want to get there as fast as possible. So in this exercise, um, I want to take you through this process. Um, I, I don't want to speak for hours and hours. I want to really try and 
crashes down to one hour. So guys, if I'm speaking fast, just flag Sue and uh, ask her to slow me down because I have had too much coffee today as well. So I do apologize <laughs> up front. So on the home screen, this is the control center and this is where we have all our empires. Empires are essentially containers that control, con, con, uh, contain multiple sites, multiple websites within an empire. So when I click on um, house clearance, you can see I've actually got two sites inside this house clearance, uh, this empire, okay? Now we've got the house clearance website which I demoed the promotional plan on. We can see it's got eight silos, 13 categories, seven supporting articles, and I've got 786 keywords sitting there. For today, I'm going to actually build out professional cleaning, which is another segment of the, the, the market. And this is catering more to uh, companies that are going to be cleaning offices, buildings, and all that kind of stuff. For this exercise, what I've done is I've used Market Samurai, and I've just extracted data out of that. I've also pulled up professional cleaning, the last keyword tool, we can look at this later on, and I was doing a drill in Kraken. And this is where we can actually look at what's going on over here. So I'm showing you the whole array today. This is the first time uh, I'm actually using all the tools that everybody can use with DWS. And I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is to actually hoover this stuff in and actually work using multiple data sets, OK? Um, one thing I'd like to say up front is if you use a specific tool, always keep your data regardless of where you get it from, flowing through. So the first um, batch of data I'm going to import into the system will be uh, from Market Samurai, just to show you that. And what I want to show you before we start is when we export out of Market Samurai, okay, um, typically when you open it up, you get your keyword grid. One thing you must do with Market Samurai is you have to resave it as a CSV file and the reason for that is if you look over here under the save as tab, for some other reason the export out is a Unicode text and if you try and import that into DWS it's not going to work. So what you want to do is you simply want to go to CSV, comma, delimited CSV file and you want to save it. Okay, and That's all you have to do. Once you've done that your data set will be perfect. It's as simple and easy as that. Okay. That's all you have to do with Market Samurai, guys. So getting back to our project, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build the site out. So I'm in my site, Professional Cleaning, and I'm going to go to step one, the silo framework. Uh, my purpose and goal for this website is lead generation. I want to generate leads for every lead I generate, I get 30 uh, pounds for every lead that converts. Okay. So I want to see if this market is profitable. <coughs> so we're going to go to the, the screen. You can see there's our top level keyword, i.e. the index page or the home page. We've got no keywords imported yet into DWS. So the first step I'm going to do is hop across to my business rules and filters. I want to drop our content down to 30 rows. I like working with 30 keywords at a time because I use the filters a lot. Um, I've looked at this here and our average page rank is 3. So typically what I do is I'll open up the top positions. A little trick you can do is if you're working on a national level, um, just change your location to the national level and you'll find that the search results actually change just slightly. You can do that if you want to just tweak things out. So when I look at this website and I hover over that, it's a page rank two. That's the guy in position number one. The guys in position number two is the same website. Position number three, same website. Position number four, same website. Then we got mismatch. So these guys own the whole front page and they've got a page rank of two. So I'm going to crush them. I'm going to take that away from them. And funnily enough, we've got the same thing again. Oh, this company over here, Mismate Cleaning Services, and they have a page rank of one. So this professional cleaning market is standing wide open for DWS. It's a, a pigeon shoot. It's not difficult whatsoever to go for this. So let's get started. So I've changed my settings over here to 30. I only want to see 30 keywords at a time. Our website theme average page rank is 2. Now, when we change this here and we fill this in, DWS adjusts itself according to the average competitor page rank. And the reason why we do this is when you're dealing with the market with page rank 2 and when you're dealing with the market with a page rank on 6 and 5 on average, the amount of backlinks, the amount of content you need to create changes dramatically. Okay, So DWS adjusts itself according to what your theme market page rank is. Okay. So 
next thing here, we've got our golden niche identifier. I want to say, give me all the keywords that are less than 10,000 pages, sorry, 100,000, and can make me more than 500 pound a month, flag them as a golden star. It'll put a little golden star, so I want to see that. Um, I look at professional cleaning, and we've got 57 million on broad. If we change this to phrase match, we've got 5 million. So I'm going to leave the default settings of DWS as it is. Okay, Basically, anything greater than a million is a silo. Anything between a million and 350,000 is a category, and anything smaller than 350,000 is going to be my supporting article level. Okay. The costings are the same. There's the profit I'm going to make per sale. Uh, that's my budget I want to earn. I want to earn five grand a month out of the site to start off with. And what I see here is I need to create 167 sales a month to achieve my target of 5,000. And based on my conversions, for every 100 people I drop to my website, I will get one sale. So what I need to do here is if I increase my on-page conversions, either on-page on my website or I write better irresistible offer titles in the search engines that to get more click-throughs, these two here will reduce the amount of people I need to send to achieve my goal. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as it is for one because we're starting and we just want to see what's happening here. So I'm going to update that and I can see I need about 16,700 people to my site a month, unique visitors. Now where am I going to find that in Scotland? That's the big, big question is this project going to be realistic? So I've set my business rules and what's going to happen now is the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my keywords as soon as the screen reloads. And um, um, while I'm here, are there any questions while we're waiting for the screen to reload? Uh, um, Russ, I'd like to just maybe answer one or two questions as we move through the steps. Okay, just so it, it, it works a bit more in a, a real-time environment for the guys. Yeah, um, see, are there any questions in yet? We don't have any questions in yet. Okay. okay, guys, if you've got any questions, just fire them in while I, I just import these keywords. So I've clicked on the Import Keyword Data tab, Market Samurai, I'm going to point to the read saved file on my desktop, and I'm just going to basically import that in. That's going to bring in about 450 keywords. While that's importing, I'm going to hop to the last keyword tool, <coughs> and I'm going to show you basically what's going on here. I've applied what we call our creamy filter, and I've set the Larry column, and what this does, it helps me see what keywords are very, very closely relied, uh, very closely aligned synonymically to professional cleaning. This is what people are sort of looking for with professional cleaning. And if I click on that part filter in the last keyword tool, what it gives you by default is a whole bunch of filters, okay? Um, we can see all these filters over here, but also give you the option to add your own. So if you are a bit more advanced, you can add your own. So you can see you've got the basic default ones there, then I've got a whole bunch of things I've written myself. But this is typically one of the advanced filters we give you in the members area, which allows you to segment the data. So when we look at this, if our theme is professional cleaning, people that typically look for professional cleaning are carpet cleaning, cleaning companies, domestic cleaning, upholstery cleaning, house cleaning, window cleaning, end of tenancy cleaning, and that's something that's very close to what I'm looking for. And there's like nearly 400 searches a day on that actual term, which is really, really good. It's got a, a high cost per click, uh, $3.19. As I move through the list a bit more, domestic cleaning, steam cleaning, patch cleaners, okay. Really how stuff where they're looking for professional services. So that story basically just tells me that people want to clean out houses at the end of tenancy. They're looking for people to clean things on the outside of the house. And the typical stuff that needs to get cleaned is upholstery or carpets with this. And then we've got commercial cleaning, which is another word. Um, when I hop across to Kraken, this is a market analysis tool. It's not a keyword tool. Uh, the last keyword tool is a keyword tool. This gives us tons and tons of keywords. You can see we've got 343 keywords, but with our advanced filters, we filtered out the top 29 important keywords. With Kraken, we get to see the market. So from professional cleaning, upholstery, home cleaning, cleaning services, okay? And this gives us the ability to actually look at the keywords and see how much money is actually flowing through each keyword. So if we sort by the TSMV, we can really see where our 
keyword we're looking at sits in the whole marketplace and we can decide is that where we want to really be positioned. Also gives us the ability to show all keywords where we get a, a bigger list. So the default list gives us the top 20, 30 keywords that are the most important around this theme and then the show all shows us the rest. So carpet cleaners is actually worth a lot of money. Okay. Uh, cleaning services is actually worth a whole bunch more than professional cleaning. So there already I can see by just by using Kraken, I've increased the potential of my profit by a, a fair size amount. Also the searches pay-per-click wise is a lot higher and that. So automatically from just looking at this, I'm going to change my project. Okay. I'm just going to go back to the business rules and field. Actually I have to go back to home. So I click on home. I'm going to change my theme keyword and I want to upgrade it to cleaning services. That's actually the keyword I want to go to. I was looking at professional uh, cleaning, but I actually just want to tweak that and upgrade that. Okay, so I've just shifted my whole project into a more profitable sector of the market that's got more search volume. And that's what we want. We want traffic. And we, the traffic creates conversions. Conversions create profit and leads for our business. Okay. So hopping back to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on show all keywords. <coughs> as soon as that page reloads, I'm going to export that data set what Kraken has given me and I'll drill into cleaning services. They will start building the site out. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to save this to my desktop. Now Kraken data is in phrase match and it's um, it's got daily search volumes. DWS handles this for you. You don't have to do anything. It just takes this information and it translates it so it works with your screen so it brings everything in line. So I'm just going to save that and, and what I'm going to do next guys is I'm going to click on let's get that out the way, uh, cleaning services. There it is there. Cleaning services, I want to drill into this keyword. What's going to happen is Kraken will actually go to this keyword, it'll do the drill, and while that's doing that in the background, we'll move back to our project and start mapping out the blueprint. And you'll see how rapidly I'm going to actually pull this all together for you guys, and you'll hear how I'm thinking about things, I'll speak them out loud, and in the next 15 minutes we'll have a single solo blueprint, basically uh, built out with a single category, five. Uh, so a single solo, five categories, and we'll be ready to move through the process. Yeah, and just to probably insert a little bit of something here, the questions that come up, the difference between a vertical market research tool and a keyword research tool. Kraken, Matt said, like Matt said, Kraken is a vertical online market analysis tool. The last keyword tool is a keyword tool. And this is probably one of the most common confusions of any of our students, any of our certification events. And just understand that the difference is that Kraken is really going for the TSMV. You can see in the upper right-hand corner of the screen here, the total search market value in pounds. I think most of you on this call are probably US-based, so it would say dollars for you. What that means is that's the general um, normalized data for an individual keyword and or the addition of several keywords on the screen in that upper right-hand corner of how much money is spent on average across pay-per-click campaigns on Google those keywords so you get some really amazing data as you go up into the silo with semantic relationships and what we have there is co-occurrence. Um, I've answered a lot of questions the last few days on that that's why I'm addressing it here on Kraken and I can't see it now but co-occurrence is essentially um, we can get into that at the end of the call but the relationship of it's deceptively powerful how much work we have to do and technologically to bring that back for you. We have to determine how many keywords, you know, if you have a particular keyword on a page, uh, the number of keywords that co-occur would be, for example, cleaning services is the keyword that Matt is using now. 
if 350,000 pages have the word cleaning service on it, but they also have a laundry service on it, then that's a significant market relationship. And that's why we call it vertical market. That's very, very different than, probably as most of you know, very, very different than how keyword research is done with Word Tracker or the base market summary or the basic tools like that. So just wanted to insert that because for whatever reason, there's been a lot of questions about that over the last couple of days. And also for those of you who are new, I don't want to assume that you know our company or you know what we're doing here. Um, Kraken and the last keyword tool are our, our, our tools that we created over the last five years to assist you as an option in Domain Web Studio. You can use other tools, but we do offer bundle packages to make sure you have this technology. It's just simply not very common in the industry. So I just wanted to add that, Matt. Thank you. Sure, no worries. Um, this is why today in this example, I wanted to show off our portfolio of tools and where we use the technologies that are really powerful. We've designed these things to get the stuff you need to rapidly board to start side. So when this comes back, I'll point at the co-occurrence and things that Russell discussed here. Um, we'll come back. That's going to be drilling for some time because it's actually analyzing over 80 to 90,000 keywords to find the best ones for you. So this is drilling through thousands and thousands of keywords to find the ones that are best suited for the market and for your project that are worth something. The last keyword tool has given us an idea of how the market sits. And just by looking at it in a few minutes, we changed from professional services, which I put up there in my search bar, professional cleaning, to cleaning services. And this gave us a whole different paradigm. So here we've imported the market samurai data. What I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to import the Kraken Voma data, which we exported out. And I'm going to pull it in, and then I'm going to put together our spreadsheet, uh, sorry, uh, we're going to build our silo framework out, okay? And I want you guys to see how quickly we do this because we know what you're looking for now. Essentially, for this project, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for people who are looking for professional cleaners to either clean the house if they've moved out or letting agents are looking for someone to come and clean the property so they can get new tenants in. Now, I've got properties and typically every time people leave home, they take the best and they leave the rest. That's just the way it is. And they right. leave all the other rubbish as well. So exactly. you have to physically go in there and prep, clean, scrub, and polish, and do all that kind of stuff, paint, lay new carpets. And I want to tap into that market to basically generate leads back in. OK, so you have imported the keywords in. We've got 517 keywords we can start with. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to first click on cleaning services. And the reason why I'm clicking on cleaning services, I want to tell DWS, uh, everything I select now, I want to move underneath cleaning services. And while that's loading up, what you'll see on our grid here is two check boxes. One is the, to move keywords to select them, to either move them or bind them to a keyword. And then the second keyword is to exclude a keyword. So let's say we're looking at cleaning as a top level keyword for our project at 61 million pages. We can add that to our project, and we can actually just do that, add it, and exclude it from the promotion. And that will push it in and exclude it, okay? i.e. we're not going to promote this keyword as a placeholder. We're just using the wording to open up the market or the market segment or the theme, and then we're going to build out our site underneath it, okay? The next thing we have here is the actual keyword quality score. If we want to see if why is this keyword the number one keyword, okay, what happens is as we load the keyword data into DWS, it goes through a stringent uh, analysis and it has to pass 17 checks before it actually gets positioned in your grid list, okay. So when I click on this over here, this will give us the quality score of this actual keyword. So what we have here is our traffic to profit funnel, and this is the funnel that the DWS data goes through. So you'll see the color matches the color as it's running through the quality score checks. We've got the color coding matching. But essentially what we're doing is we're doing analysis on the click-throughs to the on-page conversions, to the backlink and uh, content development costs. We're looking at income potential. We're looking at the income versus the expenditure. Is this keyword profitable? And then at the end, we check if it's profitable, position it. If it's not, throw it to the bottom of the barrel. And as we go through the list, each check, you can actually go all the way across and it tells you stats about the check and where that passes and it's ticked. And at the end, we end up with a quality score, okay? So if the quality is bad, we're not really interested in that keyword. We want to get the keywords or got money in it and they're most suited to what we're doing. 
The next thing that DWS automatically does for you, it tells you whether a keyword is a silo, a category, or a supporting article. And you'll see this when the screen loads. So it'll have an S, a C, or an SA. So there you can see the S. You hover over it. This is a silo keyword. There's a C. It tells you the category keyword. And as we scroll down, we may see a supporting article. Yeah, there we go. There's a supporting article. So DWS gives you the hierarchy of the data structure so we can actually know how to position the stuff. The next thing it tells you is whether a keyword has medium buy intent, high buy intent, or it's an information based keyword. Our commercial analysis looks at what is the value of the keyword and cleaners is worth more money than cleaning and it's a fraction of the competing pages. It has a fair size amount of searches and if you own the keyword, that will be worth $41,000 to you a month, okay? So when you look at this grid, we sort of just start to the left, we look at it, we see the competing pages, is this the band we want to enter into? That's not really where we want to start off with. Um, we can look at the competing pages, the search volume, how many conversions that keyword will make us a month if we rank for it based on the business rules. It'll tell us how long it's going to take us to get ranked for it if we targeted that keyword by itself. By using silo architecture, that decreases the time to rank, okay? And by doing your promotions at the end, it also helps decrease the upper level keywords that your sibling keywords are sitting underneath. It tells us how many backlinks we need for the keyword and roughly how many articles we need nested underneath that specific keyword if we're going to use it as a parent. Um, how much supporting articles or content do we need to actually position underneath that keyword. The cost that we have over here is made up of the amount of backlinks plus one article because you can only write one page when you move a page into your blueprint. So it's the amount of backlinks you need plus one page gives us our estimated cost and then our profit. If you don't make profit, it goes in red and yeah, you can see that it's got an X on the two month mark. So if you're ranked for two months, you would have made your investment money, the money over a year, back. Within a year, it will tell you how much money you're making, and if it's got a green flag, it tells you whether it's in this budget or not. Okay. Now, up here in the filter column, if we check show keywords, this will show us all the keywords, whether they pass or not. So we, all the keywords that are exceeding our budget will float up higher, and you can see that information as well. So. What I'm going to do now is I've clicked on cleaning services and I want to look for the key thing that as silos underneath cleaning services. So cleaning services, carpet cleaning is what I'm interested in. I'm going to move that as a silo. Okay, uh, steam cleaners, there's a lot of money in carpet cleaning. I'm not interested in domestic cleaning, I'm interested in office cleaning and I'm interested in end of tenancy cleaning. Now end of tenancy cleaning is really, really small. So we might want to drill into tenancy cleaning and actually look into that and uh, commercial cleaning is pretty low. So I'm just going to look through this list quickly and cleaning company is the one as a category. Domestic carpet cleaning. I'm going to leave that for now. Cleaning jobs, house cleaning. Cleaning products, steam cleaners, cleaning companies, cleaning companies is 580. That's more profitable. I'm going to start with cleaning co companies. Actually, I know what I'm going to do here. I want to promote multiple companies, so I'm going to take office cleaning as a starting point. I'm going to scroll down and I'll click on move to blueprint. What DW is to do is I'll take this keyword and I'll actually move it underneath office cleaning. Now we've got 4 million pages, so it gives us space to move and have things out underneath it. So on the reload of the page, the next thing I'm going to do is I'll click on office cleaning because I want to start nesting categories underneath the office cleaning silo. Okay, so there we can see office cleaning has been put into our blueprint. So I'm going to click on that and what I'm going to do next then is because we've got office cleaning, I can put the cleaning companies underneath that so I can add multiple cleaning companies as supporting articles later on. I can put the carpet cleaning in there and I can filter in um, the keywords that sort of work with office cleaning. Now remember you've got, we're on page one, we've got 
18 pages of keywords. So you can either click through each one of these little tabs over here and it'll take you to the next page or you can actually use the keyword filtering system over here which I like using the most. It just makes things really, really focused. Okay. So I've clicked on office cleaning. You can see over here office cleaning is selected and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just filter this data. So we've got 4,280. So I'm going to come in here, give me all the keywords that are smaller than 4,280. And I'm looking for cleaning in the word. Let's just put clean. So what we'll do now is we'll take that word and anything in the front, the prefix, or anything behind it, the suffix, or on the end, the actual word, it's going to bring that back but they'll all be smaller than the actual keyword I'm interested in. So what I'm doing is I'm essentially dropping down to the level I want to enter the market in by and I'm going to start building my map around that. I'll, I'll map out the blueprint. Does anybody have any questions at this point while we're waiting for the screen to load so we don't waste uh, any, any time? Yes, we've got several questions. So, um, sure. um, one is from Stephen. He brings up a really good point. He's talking about maybe a future request that would about allow you to um, estimate the conversion percentage by different channels and sub-channels, um, networks, educational, search engine, social media, all that, all of the different things that we take into account back on the promotion and syndication side. And the interesting thing about that is that um, that's a really tough thing to calculate, especially when you go getting over into the, the social media aspects of things. That different markets are going to convert differently, and just there's just so many different variables in all of those different aspects that trying to get all of that into um, a single calculation would really just be a nightmare. So what we've tried to do is take the most straightforward thing which has been around long enough, which is you know search engines and search engine conversions, and use that as an estimate to give you a baseline value for the keyword. And by looking at this screen and saying, okay, my baseline value for this keyword is an indication that it's reasonably good, and then just knowing that those that search volume is going to be amplified by all the different channels that you put your content out onto, um, your result should be a multitude better than what you see here. So we're trying to provide you with a worst case scenario type of a thing. Yeah, um, remember you're forecasting at this point. Um, guys, never trust search engine data because it's as slippery as quicksand. And if you base your whole life around that, <laughs> you'll sink quick. Um, you need to normalize the data and use worst case scenarios with your conversions and focus on your business rules and uh, you need to tell the story. This is the important part. It's about the context of what you're building out. We're using these numbers as profitability indicators based on the standards that search engines give us. However, we need to also just think about the whole story of what we're trying to achieve. And I know where the money is because I know where the pain is, especially in this market, and that's why I'm, I'm following the cleaning and the house clearance and all that kind of stuff through the steam of webinars because it's all dealing with um, properties and cleaning and people don't like messes and stuff and it's actually a very profitable market to be in. You just got to connect the right dots. So um, Stephen, that's a great question that, but it, it is very difficult because uh, the social, every social platform is, forms different. So how do you ever factor in what they're actually going to do because you're dealing with a different type of mindset. Um, with search, the search engine and data, at least we've got some form of normality. Okay, so I have another question, radically different topic, which is um, how do we determine the values over on the, the filter screen for, um, for silos and categories and um, supporting articles? And maybe we can flip over there and take a look at those defaults for the business rules and filter screen for a sec. So, um, this is also going to be, this is dependent on two different things. It's dependent on the size of your market, and then within that it's dependent on how many, how, how big, um, how can I phrase this, how much of that market you're trying to dominate with your website. 
we were just walking some guys through building their first websites a few days ago, and one website was really huge, and another website was a little teeny niche. And so the website that was, you know, much more of the market, we started with the silos as being a much larger number. So, you know, those numbers, if you've got money to throw at it to really dominate the market, then, you know, you can go for 100 million pages, um, anything up to 100 million pages. If you want to take a much smaller market, then your silos might only be a million pages. Um, and so then everything kind of scales down past that point. I, there are some markets, like I looked at the yoga market a couple of years ago, and yoga in and of itself was 100 million pages, and then it just absolutely fragmented. Everything underneath that, all the keywords that had money tied to them, were um, like 100,000 pages or, or 500,000 pages and smaller. So you, it was, you had to fiddle around to find those slices that make sense as silos and as categories and there's not a good science to that. So what I do is I put in some numbers, I take a look at what comes out of silos and what comes out as categories and then I'll just adjust those figures a few times until I start to see the keywords that I'm looking for falling into those kinds of categories. Do you have a better way to explain that, Matt? Yeah, um, the the way I think about it, it's, it's very close to what Sue said, but uh, I tend to think of a pie, and um, the pie being the market, the market segments is if you cut the pie into eight pieces, the themes would be um, if you took one slice and you cut that into another few more slices, the niche would be if you took one of those little slivers and you shaved off, and you know the slices just get smaller, and what I typically do is I look at where I'm entering the market, so um, for example, we coming in at cleaning services. So let's move, let's move this back here slightly. When we're coming to cleaning services, that keyword's got like 75 million. Okay, but we're not going to really come in right over there. We will do with our solid structure, but we're actually coming a bit more lower down because we're going to be dealing with a locale. Okay. But if there was 75 million, um, the way our settings are, I just say anything greater than a million qualifies as a silo. Because within the silo, we've got scope to actually move and map out that slice into categories and supporting articles. If you're dealing with a niche, for example, let's just say the niche was, uh, the, the biggest keyword you're going for was 500,000, then essentially all I would do is just type that in over there and then your your supporting article layer would drop down considerably to like 100,000. So essentially what she's saying is anything bigger than 500,000 would be a silo, anything between 100 and 500 would be a category and anything smaller than 100 would be um, would be uh, sort of supporting articles. And typically all you want to do is you want to think of a, a, a pyramid and you're just segmenting it into three layers. So what you want to do is maybe you want to even take this down to 250 and just say anything that is 250 will be my supporting articles and you can actually even it out to how the distribution runs. But what's, what you can do is it's, a, it's just a little thing, it's, it's not something hard and set in stone. Um, I usually just adjust these. If I come here and I've got silos and also everything is supporting articles, there's no categories, then I know that I need to lower the silo level and I have to decrease the, the supporting article level to make space for the category. So I've got to shift the, the band that I'll, I've got to shift it either up or I've got to shift it down. Um, that's the only way. You essentially want to drop and chop that whole market up into three slices that you want to deal with. That's the simplest um, way of saying it. And you can see it by the categories. When you look at the story that you write in here, you, um, <clears throat> you just break it up. So if you've got all supporting articles, you can't put a supporting article under silo. That means you have to um, decrease the supporting articles. You have to drop the band down so that you give more scope for the, the categories so you can actually see flesh out the category layer that defines the office cleaning. Because essentially, everything that you're mapping out for office cleaning, everything underneath office cleaning needs to define what office cleaning is or it has to be a story that's involved in office cleaning if you think of it that way. You've got to think of the index of a book almost. 
and this is what she's trying to achieve. Um, is there any other questions, Sue? Okay. Um, no, we're good. Not. Okay. So what I've done, just coming back, we've moved the style of Office Cleaning in. I've clicked on Office Cleaning. That is set it over here. We can see we've got Office Cleaning as the parent theme keyword. We've used the filter clean, and we say give me all the keywords that are smaller than 4,280,000 page. Okay. And this is brought back for to qualify on that setting. So if we look at cleaning jobs here, it's half a million. Cleaning products, we're not interested in that. Steam cleaners, we're not interested in that. We're not selling that. Cleaning companies comes up, okay? So that will be a category I'll be interested in. And that makes me two grand a month if I get ranked for that. Cleaning in London, okay, that's a niche keyword. It's under 100,000, but that keyword makes you two grand a month on your conditions. And you can see that our golden niche identified it as for the golden star. So that's a cool keyword. We could look at cleaning Scotland or cleaning modifier if we wanted to. But because it's 90,000, it's a supporting article, as you can see over there. Um, cleaning companies, domestic doesn't fall in office. Cleaning company, it's lower, less, that's got less competing pages, more searches than cleaning company, actually the same. Okay, so I'll go with that one there. It's got less competing pages. End of tenancy commercial cleaning is something I want to have here. Uh, cleaning the business. Three keywords on five keywords there. Yeah. Industrial cleaning. And what is that niche plan? Contract cleaning is a good one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to move this to the blueprint. I've selected five keywords, and you'll notice that I've grabbed a supporting article there. This will typically sit at the bottom of my silo, but it's fine. I just want to keep that contract, and I'm trying to find the theme here. So I'm going to reload. We'll look at this theme we've defined, and I'm thinking of the end user always when they come to my website. So if they're coming to the office cleaning silo, Essentially, what they're going to do is they're going to basically come along your office cleaning. What do they offer for office cleaning? We do commercial cleaning, cleaning businesses, uh, they keep us model cleaners, there's cleaning companies, industrial cleaning, and contract cleaning. Okay. Now, cleaning businesses and cleaning companies, um, I might move one of those out. But for now, I'm just planning my blueprint. I'm just looking at it. But essentially, in those 10 minutes, we've mapped out a cyber structure very easily. And... Um, we start to tell a story. Okay, so if we want to look at commercial cleaning, we can type in commercial over here. And uh, that is, I'll just make that back to the default. Uh, I'm not too worried about the size right now. Uh, so commercial cleaning, we'll click on that. We'll submit that. When the screen reloads, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to show you how I quickly nest in some commercial cleaning supporting articles. Okay. And this is how we've mapped out our site. Now, we've already added six pages to our website. Um, our budget left, we've got about seven grand left in our budget. Um, the business will make roughly $6,819 a month, okay, off the leads. Remember, we're making $30 per lead. Um, annually, this will make 80 grand for us, okay, so it is profitable, okay. So, I'm going to click on commercial. And then over here, we can see all our commercial keywords. And here you can see how the story starts getting very interesting when we get deeper down into the bottom of the barrel with all the supporting articles. We can see where the money flows through the keywords, but we can also look at the conversions, the search volumes, and we can see if they're going to actually make us money or not. Okay. Right. So selected my parents. We're going to nest some keywords under commercial cleaning over here. And once I've done that, I'm going to move on with the story because I don't want to build out the whole website tonight because it'll take up too much time. Um, okay. Commercial cleaners. I want to take that. I want to take that. I want to do that. I want to do that. Commercial cleaning, carpet cleaning, commercial carpet cleaning, 
commercial call cleaners, commercial cleaning service, professional. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just looking at the cost per click. I want to see which ones have the highest. Let's go the higher cost per click. That one. Four, two, two. Too. Okay, and when we hover these, you can see we're not going to make money up front on these, but essentially each one of those keywords are over a thousand dollars a month worth to us. Okay, so I'm going to take those, and I'm actually going to just move them to the blueprint. That's going to nest them under commercial cleaners. Then essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we actually bind our DNA break keywords from the screen as well to this. Um, as the screen reloads, I'm going to open up another tab. Actually, let's do it right now. Uh, I've clicked on View Solid Flame Blueprint. This gives us a view of the blueprint that we've mapped out, and we can see all the metadata, and it gives us a spreadsheet type look. So, if we look at commercial window cleaning, I want to bind some DNA braid synonyms to that keyword over there. So, I'm going to click on that. Now, here we can see commercial cl office cleaning, commercial cleaning, window cleaning, cleaning services, carpet cleaning cleaners and cleaning services. I'm going to click on the window cleaning and then I'm just going to type in my filter when the screen loads window and we'll bring back all the window based keywords and we're going to actually add them as supporting synonyms. Now this is the thing about your supporting synonyms, you're not bothered about the competing pages, all you want to do is you want to define the actual story of that page. So I'm just going to go in here and type in window. Now when I said define the story of the page, remember each keyword you're actually building here, that is a page on your website. Now just under commercial cleaning, you can see these supporting synonyms here are defining what that page is about. The page is speaking about commercial cleaners, commercial copper cleaning, commercial cleaning, services, commercial clearances, and commercial window cleaning. That then is also linking down to our structures. So under commercial window cleaning, we want to tell our window story. So, I'm going to take window cleaning. Now that's 8 million pages, but I know that keyword is a keyword that's worth $8,000 to our business. Okay, I'm looking at window cleaning services, professional window cleaning, and I'm not selling commercials. So, there's my three keywords. I'm going to add these as my supporting articles. Okay, so add primary supporting terms. There I've built my DNA braid. Now these keywords are bound to that window cleaning keyword. Essentially what I've done is I've added them, they'll be used contextually when the guys write the content, in the, the primary content and the promotion content, and they'll also be used as anchor text, okay? And what the WS will do is it'll use these keywords and it'll distribute it to the web. So when I refresh this page now, you'll see that that block gets filled. So when we look at commercial window cleaning, yeah, we can actually see how we've defined the primary keywords that it must be used on that page, okay? So when I started doing this, this is we've been talking about 20 minutes. Within 20 minutes, I've built a single solo site, and I've actually nested the five categories underneath here. Okay, we could very quickly do this one. So, for example, cleaning business, I could just type in your business, and I could think about the cleaning business story. But what I'm doing is just because of time constraints, I want to move on to the next chapters and show you how this all works. Okay, but that's how rapidly we can actually build out our entire website that is siloed, as th th thematically relevant, and we're using the best, most profitable keywords in the market to define our story. Remember, everything's about context, and um, what we're doing here is we're giving context to our story, and we're mapping it out by selecting the best keywords. Okay, so here in the business, we can look at what comes back, but starting a cleaning business, these keywords aren't good. I'm not happy with these keywords. So that just means I have to go to my tool and I need to drill into cleaning business. Um, sorry. What I want to do now is I'm going to jump to the solid DNA braid. Basically, all the solid DNA braid is, is it gives us the ability to define and add keywords that define the story for that specific page we want to build in. So, if you want to obfuscate your work, okay, and your anchor text and those different things, and you want to give uh, anchor text that are like your domain name, or click here, or more about, or read more, 
you essentially can add those things through the DNA parade, okay? And the way it works is the same as the keyword screen. We'll click on Office Cleaning. That'll set the keyword and it'll open up the metadata for that keyword. So when we look at Office Cleaning, we can even refine the story more through the screen. So this helps us get to that granular level where we've mapped out our blueprint on the side of the framework and we're actually refining the story even more. So here we can see our contextual keywords for the, the page, but we've got no custom keywords. We've not added any custom keywords. Okay. So cleaning services, office cleaning, uh, we could go clean office services. Sorry, uh, have about that. Uh, clean, uh, professional cleaning, that's what I was wanted to do, professional. So my original thoughts, I'm just going to add that in to what we did on the office cleaning, so it's professional cleaning is one of the keywords I want to add to the story over here. This will now become part of my anchor text portfolio later on when we start promoting. And that's basically as simple as it is, you can add one keyword per line and define it. Now what we suggest here is don't add more than three to five keywords. It just gets crazy if you start showing hundreds of keywords in here. It just, your writers will never be able to use all those keywords and it just confuses people. Okay, so that's how we just added professional cleaning into the story and it's as simple as it. So there you can see our keyword. Okay, now, <coughs> excuse me, when I come back here, you'll see professional cleaning will jump into the office cleaning there. So there it sits over there. We bound that as a DNA break keyword. So what, just to recap on what we've done in this exercise, we've gone and we've mapped out our blueprint. We can see the structure of our website. We've redefined every single page, clearly defining the keywords we want to use for the story. We now come to the team and this is where things get really good. So whether you're a one-man band or you're a complete office, with 10 guys working and you've got a whole agency going, it doesn't matter. Uh, everybody's got their part, everybody has to do certain tasks and everybody is constricted to time. This is the, the reality of running your business. If you run things by yourself, I've set this one up as a one-man band, I've already maxed out my time. You can see it over here. I don't have time left. I'm 81 hours behind with all the tasks I have left. Why is that? So I viewed the workload. In the online marketing project, I've got 174 hours worth of work mapped out for now. On the house clearance project, I've got 39 hours worth of work. And I haven't even added tasks for this project. So clearly I need help and I can see it right over here. Now the same applies if you've got other team members working with you. So uh, if I click on home, actually I've got, I won't show that right now, but as you add team, team members, simply by clicking on add to team, and you get your contractors in or guys that are working with you in the office. As a project manager, you essentially then become a project manager. You can drill down and look and see how much availability the team has. And the way this works is that it looks at you from a monthly perspective, but it looks at all your workload from prior months. So anything that's not finished from last month or the month before, plus your current workload for this month, it tallies it all up and it actually deducts how much availability you have left. Okay. Now. This makes things, in a snap, you can very quickly see who's working and who's not working and you can really balance and organize and manage the team. If projects are getting behind because people aren't focusing on them, you can bring their focus back to the project and get them to uh, catch up on it. If they swamped and they can't keep up with their workload, you can go and outsource. And the way to do it is you can find outsourcing staff to do the, the micromanagement tasks with DWS. We've created a directory over here which goes into fiverr.com it allows you to find staff like global staff or virtual assistants. It, it plugs you into all these different places specifically for all kinds of tasks that are micro tasks which you can get for Fiverr. So if you need accounts created and your team is busy, you don't stop the, the production line. You go to Fiverr, you say, look, I need you to make so many accounts for me. You give them the instruction, you pay me five bucks, you get them back, you feed them into the system. Your team, by the time they finish doing what they're doing and they come to that task, they just plug in and they use the accounts that are created cost you five bucks. How much is it going to take your team and how much do you have to pay your team per hour versus the five dollars? So the web has evolved to such a way that we can get really 
tap into expert people. Now, there's a lot of guys who do rubbish work out in the outsourcing field, and there's a lot of guys who do brand work. You got to test and measure, and you have to have your standards. But with the tool and the team manager, we can very quickly manage that whole process. Okay. So now we get into content writing. We've mapped out our blueprint. We set up our DNA braid. Now we want to come write our content. Now there's one thing I want to point out here. Earlier on, I said at the silo framework level, if you want to promote only one keyword, okay, I'm just jumping back a bit. Essentially, you can just add the one keyword to your DNA braid. You can add your synonyms to it, and you can bypass all of the stuff over here, okay, and you can promote it. The only one thing you need to do is go to your website blueprint and publish that one keyword, and that'll open up to the promotional plan, and you can actually go and promote that one keyword if you created a blog specifically targeting a specific keyword. You want to get ranked for one keyword only. It's a smaller blog, six pages. You can do it with DWS. You don't even have to put the other keywords in. However, if you want to silo your site and get ranked for more keywords and save money because it's cheaper by the dozen with siloing, it, it, it reduces the cost of developing things. You can map them out like I've just shown you. So this system moves with you, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to order our content. Now, I'm the only person in a team, okay? And I'm, I've got a status of trusted. When you add team members, they can come in as a, um, you can basically bring them as um, trial, review, or trusted, okay? So we give people statuses, and we make their status aware. They make them aware of it. We want them to see of where they are. It's just a psychological thing. So when I go to add a team, We can select where they sit in our story. Okay, this is helping us define who's sitting in where. Okay, here's where we define the status. Okay, so if you trust someone, put them in a trusted status. If you've got someone new and you don't understand them and you want to give them one article to write, set them up as a trial. They'll see they're on trial. Okay, and that does something to a person. It makes them put their best foot forward and they give their best work. If they do good, you upgrade them to review. Okay, and while they're being reviewed, they know that you're monitoring everything they're doing. By the time they're trusted, then you can actually start lowering your guard on everything that they're doing. And simply what you do is you fill in the form, and it apps them, and it adds them to your list over here, and it puts them everywhere in the system. Now, if your team logs in, if they're not a partner or a project manager, they will never see this part of the system. Okay? All they will see is this. I'm just going to log into um, the dev site, and from there, I'm going to show you the team screen of what happens when they log in. And this is a very important part. Um, when you have a team of guys working for you, okay, what happens is they want to know exactly what they need to do every single day. They don't want to think about the whole big story. So when they come in, all they see is home and help desk. Okay? They'll see the current writing tasks for the month. They'll see if they've got any setup account tasks, and they'll see if they've got any promotional tasks publishing tasks, okay? And the big pie chart of here segments into each one of those things. So if I add tasks for setting up accounts, a portion of the donuts will go to that, and they can actually see over here how the workload looks for the month. And as they finish work, they get rewarded by seeing the work's finished. And over here, basically, when they complete tasks, if they finish the task late, they have a red arrow pointing down, and if they do it on time, they have a red arrow pointing up. Green. All they got to do is simply click, sorry, a green arrow pointing up. All they got to do is click on my current task of the month, start at the top, it tells them the keyword, it tells them what type of article they're going to write, how much time they have, and roughly how much words they need. All they got to do is simply click on this node, and this will give them the DNA braid and all the stuff that they need, okay, for that specific keyword. They come in, they write the content, they fill in as much as they can here yeah, for the meta title metadata. Um, typically, if they're good, you can tell them how they must go about doing this. Else, you come in and you just refine your meta keywords, your titles, and all that kind of stuff yourself. But DWS basically pre-populates the whole story for you, okay? So as soon as they write the article and it's completed, it drops from the current tasks to the completed tasks for the month, okay? And it's as simple as it is. So hopping back to the story of where we order our content, this is where the content writing will start. Okay? Um, you just basically select the user, and 
with outsourcing or even on yourself, you need to define what you're writing where and what's the quality of the content that you want to write for that website. Okay, now we're on the primary website. On step four, we're writing only content for the website, what we've got mapped out over here. And when we click into our node, these icons will change and indicate when things are written. So if you've got guys working for you in writing, as they're finishing their works, whenever you come back, you'll see a little green circle with a white tick in it. Um, when content's ordered, you'll see it's got an editing, it's in the editing stage, okay. So the system will tell you exactly what's going on, where you got it. From a visual perspective, we can see our silos, our categories and supporting articles. And ordering the content is very, very easy, okay. Um, you simply select where the content's going, so we've got the different rings, what's the quality, how many words you want, and what you're paying them per article. Um, you can even create your own custom painkiller article templates. We give you a PDF with a whole bunch of samples and you can simply just click on this little link over here that opens up an editor and whatever painkiller article you've added for this project, it will become available over here. Okay, And you can assign that thing. So when I come to write the article, that template gets injected into the editing screen and they just fill in the gaps and they write around that. Um, here's where you set the date. So I'll set the date to um, the 26th for tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get them to build out this first silo. So in this exercise, we're going to build out one silo and we're going to leave the rest of those because we want to deal with them later on. So I click order content. What the system does is it'll bring up a, a, a template which we've created for you. And this is just a outsourcing template that we've created so that you can clearly define what it is that you want done. If you don't like writing, we suggest creating a video and you simply just go to the source, okay, you can actually copy that and delete it all and you can paste your iframe YouTube video in here and you actually tell them what you want them to do for that batch of content that you're assigned to them. Now, this will send the person you're assigning it to an email straight away telling them they've got a new task with the instruction and basically what this template tells you is what's expected, what's acceptable, what's not allowed and then any further information. So you can write your own template and just stick it in there. You can delete this and write the personal note if you know them or you can drop a video in. It's totally up to you. But the reason for this is it's all about accountability and clarity. Um, the more clear you are, the better the results you got. Um, if you clearly define what's expected, there's no comeback with bad quality and you've got it in writing what you expected up front. Okay. So typically you just click send the instruction of you mapped out what you want done and when we come back to the system on the ordering screen we can now see that we have things that are ordered okay we can see the date they do and it gives the status of content ordering and when we open up our nodes you can see the icons have changed to be written and those have not been ordered yet okay so um, while I'm on the content screen over here guys do you want to ask any questions before we move on to the publishing of the website We've got a basic question. Um, Stephen yeah. made a comment about um, all of this leading to over-optimization. Is it okay if I pull out my soapbox for a few minutes? <laughs> sure, go for it. I'll just okay. move the... the um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I've, I've seen all this stuff about over-optimization. I've seen what guys have said to avoid the... that they did to... Um, get out of the sandbox with their over-optimization penalties and that kind of thing. And I, I just got one word to say about this. The vast majority, if not absolutely everything that I saw that was an over-optimization fell into one of two different categories. The first category is where people had like one money keyword and they used that one money keyword everywhere on their website. So they had like a five-page or a ten-page website and they targeted this one keyword on every single page and they did all the things that you're supposed to do for SEO, naming the, the images and putting it in their tags and their H tags and their meta tags and all of that stuff, everything that you're supposed to do, they did with this one keyword and then all of their inbound links also revolved around this one keyword. And that that's just kind of like a duh to me, right? That, that's not over-optimization, that's in my jargon, it's over-stupefication. Like, if you can't be a little bit more thinking outside the box than to come up with one keyword and you're going to target that whole site with that one keyword, then you deserve a penalty. So what we've talked about from the get-go is 
themes and thematic relevance and a cluster of keywords so that you're diversifying your content, you're doing it naturally, you're creating a story and your website's expressing all of the different ideas about your market. You're literally swallowing your market whole because you're using all of this different jargon to diversify your keyword portfolio, which is a word that you use. I just, I really think it's a great word. So um, when you do that, when you're targeting something between three and ten keywords on each page and you're doing the optimization, I, I don't go overboard with on-page optimization factors. I do like I don't know, someplace between three and five factors. You know, I, I do the metadata, I do the H tag. Most of the time I remember to name the image and I might get a couple of other things in there and then I let the silo <laughs> plugin do all the rest of the stuff, right? And and that's the extent of my attempting to optimize on page factors. And then Domain Web Studio helps you with oh, the yeah. inbound links and and in my mind, like that, we haven't had any problems with the websites that we've done that way. Like it's, uh, we haven't been hit with over optimization. Um, did you have something that you wanted to say, Russ? I just, I, I hesitate to even address the issue of over optimization because, you know, it's like it's almost like the word over relevance. Exactly. It would be as if it would be as if Google said this content is overly relevant. Sorry. <laughs> It doesn't make it. It doesn't make any sense. It's just as stupid as the rest of the SEO industry. It's like, um, I mean, it's it's. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the I'm on the Google Hangouts live with Matt Cutts and the SEO and SEO spam team. You know, the last few days and watch. You know, because they're using real time broadcasting to syndicate themselves everywhere all the time right now, right? Right. And you know, and so they're having this conversation about, is it. <laughs> Is it possible to recover from the Google Panda update and over optimization and all these things? And and what's being said uh, when he breaks down the exact five things to remove yourself from the Google Panda update and the over optimization is 100% precisely the exactly same thing that he said 10 years ago. There's no, <laughs> no exactly. <same> difference. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, I mean, I actually. I wrote this, and everybody can go to our blog. Uh, it'll be updated there. I actually I covered each step by step of what he said, and it, it's so obviously like anybody who really knows the technical, like Sue Bell knows, you know the technical spec because you've actually been back in the engineering the patent since you know 2005. But what I'm saying is that almost with a glint in his eye, as if he knew that you knew that I knew that he knew that everybody knew that he was saying exactly the same thing. The only thing that's different is that Panda updates, you know, every two and a half months, and you're never going to know quite exactly when they launch the drive, as we call it. And so, you know, for me, as you get into it, you realize that over optimization, the thing that's that's unique about it is it all started from two blog posts that were extended from SEO Moz. Okay, SEO Moz is having SEO Moz Con today, and there's a lot of people there, and they have a pretty large network now. They've become large on their own. They have what they have is they have a lot of SEO writers that write on the outer ring. And then if the check it out, this is so hilarious. If the SEO if the SEO article is popular, I didn't say accurate, folks. If it's popular, it gets syndicated inwards, okay, and then into the inner ring of the SEO Moz network. And then you have to determine whether or not that is checked out by SEO. SEOs that RAND trusts or that their network trusts in the rest. The overall is so we track the meme to two or three articles, so check these out. And the article has to do with a very well written article and and uh, you know, I'm not going to get it mention the name of who it was, but the, the over optimization meme came from a test that somebody exposed, I'm sure some of you have read it, where he said several times to the article, I may not be right about this. But here's the cognitive illusion that makes it kind of look like I change the backs and diversify the backlinks that I'm not being penalized anymore. Now here's the problem with that, based on me hanging out with the Google SEO spam team, you know, in the last few days on Google Hangouts Live. The problem with that, and he admitted to this, is that the Google Panda update, and Matt spoke to this directly in the live hangouts, 
is in about four days after they run the drive, after they run the, they, they kick it off and it starts hitting all the servers and doing everything, you've got to wait, you've got to hold your breath for a second and wait for the buoyancy to hit. And they call that the adjustment. And when the adjustment actually takes place, that's when you actually know what's going on. Now, the challenge is that all the SEOs go out and they write all this stuff before the, before the kick, before the bump, like in the movie Inception, you know? Right. Like everything changes and then the dream wakes up and it's like bump. And by that time, everybody's already written about the first dream, right? Right. And then there's a kick. <laughs> so, 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 what you, so what you have is a bunch of nonsense combined with speculation. And, and the writer actually said, hey, this, this could be speculation. And what he actually did is he changed the backlinks to um, his direct domain, okay, www.mydomain.com. And, and there is evidence across different servers that this may have an effect. But then you get some scary stuff based on that dream, that idea, that speculation pre, prior to the bump before the algorithm is finally settled. Okay? And you can get this in Matt's own words. That somehow words like click here or just craziness, okay? Like, I'm not going to say one or the other. I'm just going to let Sue handle that, okay? I'm not because I know there's a lot of there's a lot of really solid beliefs about you know now now everybody should write click here in their promotions or you know use banners. Or, guys, if you have a diversified backlink from the Google uh, Images networks, from the video networks, and the rest, you've got enough diversification. And if you're using Domain Web Studio to diversify what we call, and I think Matt went through it a little bit fast because he's had so much coffee. But the whole purpose for the Sonomic Set module is yeah. to create the, the very diversity that makes the joke of, oh, I'm sorry, this is overly relevant. I mean, you, everybody listening to this call, you know that's like, that's the, there's no, it's, it's a logical fallacy. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Okay, over, the very foundation of why Google creates relevance, as Matt said on his uh, Hangouts, is compellingness combined with telling a story in a sequential order and linking to it using backrub or page rank. Okay? And so all I'm saying, and then I'll get off my soapbox, because it's a big one, <laughs> is that <laughs> it's I, a washing I, machine. <laughs> it's a washing machine. Is that please please think about what's being said in the community and know how I received several phone calls and a couple of really panicked ones during the panda upgrade. And I said, just relax, don't do it. You know, everything's gonna be fine. And of course, a few days later, everything was fine and things adjusted. The networks that got hit really hard, I told them, don't relax, things are not going to be fine. You can take one look at their network and you just know, because there's like Sue said, there's only one or two keywords. And here's the thing, is people who had a significant portion of their backlinks on those secondary networks, of course, they're, they're hosts because they're not doing what Matt and Sue have set up to do in this portfolio. They don't have a diversified portfolio of internal structures of internal linking that's telling a story of Sonomic Net, okay, which is essentially the, the Google tilde key times, times 100, and you know, based on their own parameters. And then on the backlinks, you don't have diversity happening, and your content's not compelling and has zero traffic. I mean, what did you expect? And then, and then, everybody, and then everybody goes around writing the sky is falling in pendant, and you know, it's just, to me, it's got to end. Like this is why we're moving away from SEO as a as an isolated channel, yeah. and into SEO optimized multi-channel multimedia traffic building, broadcasting and publishing networks. I mean, just forget about it. Like, don't think about SEO as a as an isolated channel. Move into the new era with us, into personal broadcasting and publishing. Yeah, because um, yes, the thing is, uh, with what Russ has said, yeah, everybody's been focused on backlinks. The, the, the whole business, I need to build backlinks, backlinks, backlinks. They've forgotten about the story. They've forgotten about the client. They've forgotten about what they're actually doing. Exactly. exactly. And they pulled backlinks. And they did a great job at it. But where did they get them? Now we're fast. Yeah, because the backlinks are, remember, remember, backlinks are people too, or not. <laughs> okay? I mean, that's the bottom line. Backlinks don't mean anything. What does that even mean? It means it's a page that's supposed to be meaningful and relevant. I mean, remember what, guys, you know, it's the bottom line is this. SEO can be summarized very easily. Cool, if cool people link to cool stuff, that cool stuff becomes relevant. And if it's fake people linking to, to cool stuff, it's not that cool. Yeah. Simple. Yep. That's so use Domain Web Studio to make sure you, you have the different qualities of content. Matt's got the different, I mean, this is why we did this, because 
uh, I want to I want to get really clear here for a second. Let's make a slight detour, Matt. Let's go to yep. go to the go to the domain. I want to talk about Sue's primary corporate enterprise principles that she learned from all of her big military industrial programming stuff. Sorry, Sue, I'm going to hijack your your yeah, ideas no. here. If you go to if you go to the domain uh, onewebringtorulethemall.com, you just type that all in, Matt. Uh, yeah, you've got it, Miss. Uh, only one T, and you got to replace that T with a G, that first T. Yeah, yeah. And, the and if space. you guys want to, <coughs> yeah. Before they uh, all. Yes, yeah, a single word, one web ring to rule them all. And you guys can go there um, in your own browsers. And this is a little place marker that we built because Sue ended up explaining this so many times that I realized that it seems complicated, but. Uh, you got a space in here. Yeah, it's one word, Matt. Yeah, so that's okay. So we've explained this so many times because it's important. Okay, what people are really trying to do with backlinks and you know, and all these different things is they don't understand the flow of traffic. One web ring to rule them all. Yeah, they don't understand the flow of traffic through their networks, and they don't understand how relevance combined with traffic and combined as a signal and how social media, which is borrowed platforms essentially, interacts with your own platforms. And so keep in mind, and I don't want to detour too much here, that the, this, what's so incredible, I mean we've shown the platform to uh, some pretty big heavy hitters in the internet marketing community as well as the SEO community, what we're actually doing. And what Matt and Sue have programmed the Domain Web Studio, all of these web rings, these layers of both traffic and relevance flow from both social platforms that you don't own and platforms that you do are accounted for automatically in the database structure of Domain Web Studio. So it's not only relevance but traffic on steroids. So I wanted to give you guys this chart to bookmark and take a look at because it does link over to our wiki so that you can understand the level of We've made something incredib incredibly sophisticated, very easy in terms of relevance. And the reason I show you this chart is because uh, synonymic sets or diversity and this issue of over-optimization, over-optimization can only take place if you're focused on one of these rings. I'm going to repeat that. Over-optimization can only take place if you're, if you're focusing too much on one of these rings or a single keyword relationship between two of them. And that's just not how we've ever taught it. And that's why we're ranking, two th we have a 2,000 to 3,000% increase of traffic on client sites in the middle of a Panda update while everybody's calling us on the phone screaming. Okay, it just doesn't work like that. So, sorry Matt, I didn't want to hijack you, but guys, we just want you to understand what over-optimization is. It's the same thing as this idea of overly relevant. It doesn't really exist. It's a misnomer based on not understanding the foundation of how linking works and how relevancy and traffic signal work within synonymic sets. Okay, thank you. I'll get off my my washing machine now. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> no, well, here's the thing: is uh, exactly what Russell said. Guys, I'm gonna throw a spam in the works and say, what happens if Google turns into a paid network tomorrow? You log in, you de-indexed, and there's an invoice waiting for you in your mailbox. If you want your rankings back, you're gonna have to pay X. Uh, we're no longer providing free search results because of spam reasons. Therefore, everybody's got to pay to make the system fair, just like how AdWorks works. But where would you be in your business? Where would you sit when everything gets turned off? Okay, um, that sounds like a big doomsday thing, but it can happen. You know what I mean? And the whole point of doing doing all this stuff is to drive traffic, is to speak, to engage with your clients, to find your clients to put your message in front of them and to engage with them and to get ranked not only on search engines but to have traffic coming from multiple platforms, multiple rings. So it doesn't matter where it is, it's all feeding down. Remember, everything's flowing back to the golden frame. Everything is running downhill. Backlinks run downhill to your site which creates point page rank which causes you to rank for your categories much quicker which then in turn causes silos to rank much quicker and at a fraction of the cost. Okay, now. By defining the story and thinking through what you're doing and def taking the, the best keywords. So, like when we looked at this keyword, we bound them as synonyms, okay? 
these are micro thoughts or micro, micro fragments of thoughts that people are actually keying in because they want the information on it into the search engines and that's how the search engines work. People type in a phrase, they're looking for information back. Now uh, we are finding what those phrases are and we are connecting them to a story and we're telling the story. So when we come to write our content, okay, we order our content, we assign it to whoever we want to assign it. When your team writer comes in to write his content in DWS, he's got that story. Okay? He has the information in front of him. He knows what the primary keyword is, but he also will then be told exactly what the contextual keywords are for the copy. Okay? So over here, we're on the top level keyword. When I'm writing my story, I simply can just grab that and I can start telling the story about this whole project. Okay, I'm speaking my contract clearly. And then I start writing, bang, bang, bang. And as I'm writing, I'm using these words to define the story. When I write my, my office cleaning thing here, uh, we can say the best office cleaning services in Scotland. Countrywide. Okay, and we just start defining the story. This is us creating what we're talking about. The same thing goes for our title tag. If we want to mirror that, we can copy it and stick it in over here. There we come across, we can see our, our meta keywords for our page are clearly defined. Then we write our, our story. Okay, so we said the best cleaning services in Scotland countrywide. Uh, we've got office cleaning offices. I just make this up rapidly, but is that essentially with your description, you want your description to re reinforce what your title page is, okay? Because in the search results, this is what's going to be in the, the blue. That's what gets ranked. And the description must encourage them to click on that because you must be the only offer, the irresistible offer must be there. By doing that and increasing the click-throughs from the search engines, the more people click on your link, the easier it is to get ranked for page one. And that's a very important thing which people forget. And it all comes down to when you're actually preparing and planning your content. Because that, that click-through must really define the story. This is almost like your elevator pitch, what you're saying, to get the guys there. When you're done, you click Create the Article. Okay? And once your article is created, it moves out of the bin of a year and comes to your completed tasks for that month. Now you'll notice that I've just done that, my article is written, I can see it's written, there it's in the completed bin, and I just start moving through. And the same applies for your team when they log in and do the work. So then we've ordered our content and we've written our content. So whether you're doing it yourself, you can just keep on working through your process, rapidly writing your articles, getting to the flow of things, you can see what you're dealing from a global scale, you can really plan out your stuff, or your team can write the unique content and you can actually come back into it and fine tune it. Okay, so it gives you complete control, and that's a really good word, control. And over our con we've got control of the content for the first time. We've got real control because everything's in one place. Okay, and you can communicate with people in one place, and the people writing your content know what you want to write about. It's clearly defined, and we've got the comfort knowing that these are the best keywords that people are, are using to talk about that particular topic. So once we've done that, all we simply do then is we've mapped out our whole blueprint we can come and publish this. Now this is where DWS takes another detour. You could have a client that wants a website built, right? You can map out his framework, you could sign him up as a team member, you could have him log into DWS, have him write his own content, you can then go and publish the content, build his site and start doing the promotions for him. Or you could map out his blueprint, not write any content, they just want the blog as a skeleton where they'll go in and fill content afterwards. They just want you to create the framework and put the blog and get it up right and get everything set up for them. Then all you simply do is you come along here and you just tick off what you're going to publish. Okay? So because we're demonstrating building out a single silo, we've got the silo, the category and the supporting articles, I'm going to publish those. When I click that button, you'll see a little earth over here with the arrow pointing up defining that it's been published. So these nodes will not be put into our blog, okay? So when I come to save this blueprint, <coughs> I create my XML, it takes that article and everything to be done, I save it to my desktop, 
and that's my site ready to get built. So if I've gone through this process of mapping it out, doing the DNA braid, my team's written the content, I've come to the content writer, we've written our primary content, I've rechecked everything, I'm happy with everything, I've dropped my videos in, we've done the whole shebang, we export that out, we create a silo framework and we publish it one silo article. Simply all we do is we come to DWS Silo Builder, our importer, I'm going to set this to publish this to save time, and I'm going to put some XML file. Okay. Now this is me building the website. And uh, everybody on the call, I know I don't want to assume that you know what you're looking at here. This is a plugin that works in conjunction sorry, with the. Sorry, Russell. Just before you start there, um, that's the website built. It took three seconds. Sorry, Russ. You can carry on now. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. He just built the website. I want to make sure you guys knew that this is a plugin that interacts with Domain Home Studio. I didn't want to assume that we have some new people on the call, Matt. Oh, right. So I beg your pardon. So this is a plugin. So, yep, we built our website in three seconds. Now, all we need to really do, guys, is just come to the menu. We click up our menus under appearance. And we just do a few little tweaks, and that's the website built. Okay, so we've got our top nav bar there. I basically want to take the home, the category, office cleaning. I want to add that to my menu. Home, and there's my silo there. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to save it again just to set it. And when I come to the pages, okay, I click on all pages. Because of different themes, we essentially need to come and we need to define where our side navigation is going to go. So I want to put my sidebar template over there. So I'm going to click update. So I've updated all these pages to use the sidebar template. And when I come back to uh, the widgets, all we really have to do is grab the DWS widget, okay, the advanced solid widget, which you'll find here under the available widgets, and you drag it into your sidebar. And when we preview this website, now Obviously, this is one of our test sites, so the, the home page will say high cholesterol. That's the last test we did with a uh, previous client when we were taking through the presentation. Um, there's our website. There's office cleaning. We're on the home page. When I click on office cleaning, there's commercial cleaning. Okay, That's our category we've mapped out. So if I hop back, you'll see we now see um, Office cleaning, commercial cleaning. And then when we click on commercial cleaning, we're going to expose our structure. Now you'll notice that the plugin actually manages your hierarchy of how the website stuff. Uh, so we're on the actual silo landing page commercial and it's linking back up to the root, the domain, the top level domain. As soon as I click on commercial cleaning and I go to that silo landing page, we link back up to the actual office cleaning silo there's our commercial cleaning, and then he has all our supporting articles. And what this does is it actually makes the buoyant page rank flow nicely through your site. So you've got this evergreen perpetual flow of buoyant page rank flowing all the way up to the silos. It's always running up and then running back down. It's in a perpetual loop. And what that does, it helps the big keywords you're going for, like office cleaning, get ranked much faster. The keywords like commercial cleaning, your category keywords, it helps you get ranked for them much faster because these keywords down at the bottom level get ranked really quickly and they push your page rank up and then the whole theme pushes page rank up to office cleaning. So as you build the site out, silo by silo as you move through your projects, two things can happen. One, you got your site up in minutes, you're live, now you can start promoting. Two, if you were doing work for a client, you can build out a site for them this month, next month, continuity, you sign them up into the next one and you sign up into the promotion. And this is how you scale and build your business up if you're doing client work for people. Okay, So that is how we got our site live in real time and it took us not even 10 minutes to get that done. Remember beforehand all the content was written so whatever was written will be published over here. Another example of this would be the just the, the root domain where we've got content that's been imported in. Um, just as an example for you guys to see. So if I click on bad credit over here, there's the whole article. This has been imported in from DWS. We've done experiments with videos, all sorts. You can put whatever you want in the WYSIWYG. You can format it, make it look really good. And when it gets published, it gets published the way it is. Um, 
there we go, how to fix bad credit. There's the whole silo structure. There's all the supporting articles. This has all been built out just using the plugin, step by step, block by block, silo by silo. Okay, so there we've got it live. So in one hour and about 20 minutes, we've actually mapped the website, we've dummied the comment, uh, the, the content, but we've actually published and we've got the website live in literally an hour and a half. Okay, now we get back to the promotional plan. And this is where everything starts. So here we can see we've got a single silo that needs promoting. We need to set up a promotion plan. Now, now we're coming back to the story here. Just publish this quick. Let's just get back to that page again. Sorry, guys, for that. Um, we are back at this stage over here. This is where we're going to start planning everything out. Okay. So the starting point is here. Remember in the beginning we changed the, the primary theme keyword, we changed it over here. By the time that you get to this level, you can you need to have your website live, okay? So what I'll do for this example is I'm just gonna go back and I'm take a subdomain there, copy that and I'm gonna stick this in over here. So there's our subdomain the main, okay? We stick that in like that. For videos, we've got a guy on Fiverr who'll do us a video for 10 bucks, not five bucks. Let's just say five bucks a video. Uh, our press releases, we've got something we can write it for $20, a press release. Our directory submissions for the paid ones, we're going to pay $20. For new content, we're paying $15. And to repurpose, it's going to cost us $10, okay? Our backlink cost is 25 bucks. We're looking for backlinks between the page ranks of two and three if we're going to purchase them. And over here, we're going to fill in our company information if we are doing local business work or service work, okay? This is for local pages, Google+, and all that kind of stuff. Once we've done all the cost settings, we can actually update that, okay? And the system will remember what our production costs are for the promotion. The next thing we can look at here is <coughs> our target factors, okay? We're looking for business to business. That's primarily where we're looking for it, and we're looking for local and national work. Okay, so we're sort of mapping out where we're going to be promoting. Now we want to see what's been said on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, article submission sites, Geely, and PR Web. We're going to get a feel of what's been said using the primary theme keyword of what we're looking for. So I'm just going to click on Geely as an example, and I'm going to click on Twitter, and you'll notice that DWS opens up two screens, and we can go and see what's being said on the web about these things and you get a feel for where the promotions are happening and what's been talked about. Okay, So on Twitter we get through their, their feed and we can see what guys are saying about cleaning services. Okay, that's taking a while, we'll come back to that. But it's on Geely, we can look at the web, blogs, news groups, video, discussions, buzz, we can look at everything and we can see the headlines they're using and we want to pay attention to what they're doing for their promotions. Okay, and we want to see where the discussions are taking place. And so on Geely you get to see this that if this discussion is found you'll actually it'll pick up on it. So if we go to look at the news groups for example, you can very quickly see where guys are chatting. And if you're going to deal with forums and that kind of stuff, these are the places you want to start engaging with these people. So a bit of snooping about up front gives you a lot of things. We click on Q and A and this helps us find the pains because usually on the Q and A's house cleaning services, anyone doing it here, you can actually look at the data that's posted you can see the questions that people ask them, how do I make what, blah, blah, blah. You can use this information in your promotions and this is where we can start curating and we can use people's information and what they're saying to promote your own things. Okay. In Twitter, we can see what promotions are taking place. Okay. What companies are promoting themselves on the social networks. And once we get a good feel for what's going on there, uh, this is the update, I forgot this for this in. That's alright, we can update that as well. I'm just going to say that we're going to do everything just for now. With LinkedIn, you could find companies that need their offices cleaned in your locale just by using LinkedIn as a search engine to find leads. There's multiple ways you can use those properties to get the traffic you're looking for. Okay, So we set up a promotional plan. The next thing we do is we're going to set up our promotional blueprint. And I've got a single silo that we want to promote and we want to figure out how long it's going to take us to do this. So I've clicked on the Manage Promotion Blueprint. 
I'm just going to clear out the cache so that everything's empty. <coughs> Typically, I always click on the exclude before I start a new project just to be double sure that there's nothing there. Now, I want to select all of these. And we're going to promote the silo, the category, and the supporting articles. I'm going to start the date from today. If you want to start this promotion further down the line, you can change the date and it will start the promotion from that date set. Okay, so I'm going to click include and this will build out our whole promotional plan for us. So within the screen load, we'll have the full promotional plan that factors in the 15 months and all these, plan these months here for the time to rank. It will actually work out exactly what we need to do based on our backlinks and everything that's required. And it will then show us, okay, yeah, this is what predicted. So we can see in August we've got a lot of work up front, then it just drops right off, then it jumps back up and then it sort of pans out and, and you get like a, a nice medium flow, okay. The reason for the spikes is just for the few keywords that take one to two months to get promoted. They'll, you do that work up front and then they'll fade away. So by month by month we can see how much work we have and we can see how it drops down. We can see the savings we can make and I'm just back to the same screen again. So I'm not going to go over the whole screen again. But this is our promotional plan. We can see the signals we're doing. And this is where I really want to talk about putting yourself everywhere on the web now. Okay, this is a very important part. You're going to be engaging in forums. Simply by using forums, you can drive a ton of traffic back to your primary website. Okay? Are you using search engines? Maybe. But you're actually driving traffic directly from forums through your signature. If you write a compelling signature, you can actually drive a lot of traffic. By responding to people and answering the questions the best, you can drive a lot of traffic back to your blog or your website. By talking to social groups, engaging in conversations, posting and doing really good promotional stuff, you can drive a lot of traffic. Pinterest is a great example from an image perspective of how you can use images to drive traffic back to your primary. Articles, writing really good articles. Blog articles, the same story, but everything you do here the byproduct is a backlink, and this is how the byproduct of backlinking is is managed. So what I'm going to yeah, do. Is so when we talk about multi-channel, this is what we're really talking about, folks. We're talking about um, whatever, and every promotional plan is going to be different, just like everybody everybody's blueprint is different. And one thing that I want to remind everyone watching is that we don't cover this as well as we could because we're demonstrating the software. But there's a membership area and a, a deep educational stackable process that goes along with this that talks about how you what your business model is really about it's not just that you have a bunch of keywords stacked in a silo structure and spit out a blog and you know you just have a bunch of keywords stacking those headlines are going to be carefully tweaked based on the pains in the marketplace that you've researched during the first part of the uh, module um, there's a lot of things that are educational that Matt couldn't account for because it's just too much in fact our certification is actually um, seven days, right, Sue? I think it's seven. I don't know if she's here with us. It's but, nine um, days. It's, uh, it's a nine days. <laughs> yeah, okay. We had, to add, we had to tack a few days on there for the integration of RSS one feed and the social media signals, specifically Google+, Plus, which really kind of is the web that is now kind of gluing together both the personalized results and the Google proper results. So all of these kind of multi-channel areas combined with multimedia provides an amazing... Uh, presence throughout the web and when it's SEO optimized in these kinds of ways throughout your entire business model that is that your genetic keyword code so to speak is disseminated throughout your network then things really begin to happen and you become an unstoppable force it's, there's just nothing you, you're just not stoppable at that point because you're actually doing what nature has designed your we've designed this to do which is to make sure that you're providing, syndicating your, your business DNA through every possible syndication channel. Yeah, the, the buzz yeah. you build ends up becoming a tsunami. Yes, exactly. And it really, there is a point, there is a tipping point, you know, the whole Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell thing. There really is where you reach a, and in the study of memetics or the study of ideas and how they transfer through culture, there really is a tipping point for your brand. And that's why we call it a personal brand broadcasting and multi-channel multimedia you know, publishing network because we can, we can see already that these social signals and, and 
there's this, you know, I, I won't get too much into this right now, but there's a massive amount of evidence to talk about multimedia and multi, you know, the multimedia is, you know, the PDF, the, the video, the, the social signal, the new, the news story. It's everything together. That's why we're preparing you for the next couple of years because really your presence on the web is going to, it's really amazing because SEO as we know it, that is the relevant words, words and keywords are not going to go away and theme clusters are not going to go away. What's, going to, what's coming is a thousand different ways. It used to be there's a thousand different ways to say the same thing and that helped your rankings. Now it's a thousand different ways and a thousand different channels that you have to say your message or you're going to drown. You're going to be drowned yeah. out. Your sound will be dr literally, this is why we're building this, you guys, is that we know that, yes, semantics and it remains, because we've been building semantic technology since 2005, but now it's about channels and traffic with that semantic DNA and your business, you're carefully stacked on top of your business plan. I mean, that's why yeah. it's so, what we're doing is so amazing, what Matt and Sue have done is so amazing, because you have to combine a business plan with an SEO plan, and that's why our members area backs us up, because if we just kind of revealed this as just a hardcore technology, you might get the impression that these are just a bunch of keywords stacked up without actually going through the, not at all, there's a, there's a very uh, in-depth process of, mark, of research, integration of painkiller discovery, and Matt, we didn't even really cover that well, the, the writer's module about painkiller, but all of this stuff is, this content is, as Matt Cutt said today in the, in the Hangouts, incredibly compelling when you follow our precise templates and our market research processes. And the other thing that I would add to that is that this process at the moment, the promotion and syndication module, is a linear set of processes. In other words, you're doing one task at a time, you're having somebody, you're signing somebody to write it, you're signing somebody to distribute it, and then it gets out, goes out on the one feed. And at the moment, it looks like a, a fairly huge number of tasks that have to be done if you want to promote a good-sized website. But with the version that we're working on right now that should be out within the next 90 days, you're going to be able to start doing parallel processes. So in other words, you'd be able to start with a video and just kind of drop a bomb. And a bunch of parallel processes will happen from that video. and you'll be able to do mass syndication with a single push of a button. Yes, in fact, that's really where um, the, what we're doing on the back end right now, what we're doing for this next version is just, I mean, and, and this is not necessarily appealing to everybody, for example, for an agency, but for one-man bands and for individuals who are maybe coaches, consultants, uh, executives, um, musicians, <laughs> uh, anybody who wants really just to focus 100% on creating content and yet still be in all those places, really it's just going to be, you know, make a video and it transforms it into about 10 different media files and then goes to about 800 different places. Boom. And, and the only thing that you've done is just created the stackable uh, silo structure to make sure that you get the sustainable uh, bang for your buck and then your so and the social media integration happens on its own. And I had a special little takeaway um, that I wanted to make sure that everybody had here. I don't normally get into this, but I just wanted to do it real quickly because we've got a lot of emails in the last couple of days about it. Um, Matt, not to hijack you at all, but um, just make, make it really, really super simple that um, Google Plus, we cover in our Google Plus course and in our content curation, what we call premium micro content creation and, and micro press releases. Um, Google's social algorithm is changing and I want you to be really, really clear. Sue and Matt and I have back engineered the algorithmic relationship of Google Plus and, and the primary search engines. And the, the amazing thing is, really what there is is just a bunch of circles, just a bunch of people, social, some of them verified, some of them unverified human beings between the, the old search engine and the new one. This is what you call cybernetics, a combination between the machine world and the human world. And Google is putting billions into that right now. And the good news is this, the system that you've seen today and that Matt has shown you and that Sue has revealed to you is, is already taken into consideration the cybernetics, that is the fusion of human capital, what they call Google Plus, in, and now we also have that personalized results on the search engine results page with the 
legacy version of Google, which was all the um, you know back rub, used to be the algorithm, which is now called PageRank. All those things together combined in an altogether different form of link juice. And the good news is this: keywords and keyword clustering and silo architecture governs them all. <laughs> you're, you're, it, it's not some, you know, it's like the movie The Matrix. Some things never change. Some things do, right? Well, you know, the thing that never changes is the words. Like Sue, even when we went out for coffee the other day, we were talking about mobile applications. And one of our clients was just, you know, doing keyword research the same way for the mobile app stuff that they were doing that we were doing five years ago in, in early themes now. Words words aren't gonna change folks. The way that we look at them in our process and our stackable system are you know, finding the words that people are using to solve their own pains and their problems, that's not gonna change. And the integration of those in intelligent ways, in natural ways, that are friendly to the user as well as to the machine world is what this system is all about. Yeah. What I drew out here just quickly while Russell was speaking was just to demonstrate what Network Empire actually is. Um, it's, it's compiled of a training area which teaches you about the stackable system and DWS is designed to facilitate the stackable system, i.e. make it a reality to have the linear process of being able to zoom in and out into processes and then also control all the moving parts as you move from point A to point Z. And this is how everything is interconnected. It's a stackable system with training, a process, and a software to support the process. So you've got the full package, and you've got in-depth training that tells you exactly how all the stuff is connected, and it's really, really powerful. And um, if I just jump back here, what we've done is we've actually worked our way through the Network Empire stackable system. This bar here is the stackable system. The training in the members area tells you how to think about things as you move through the stackable system, how to deal with people, how to deal with content, how to write the perfect content for your website, how to write the perfect promotional content. And it's pretty simple because um, as we move down, we've made our plan. If we're happy with our plan, we click finalize, that locks it down. Then we come and we order our content, where we're going to place our content. And we've got all the third-party platforms mapped out for you over here that are of high page rank and quality. You simply go through the same process, select the person, when must we do by, how much time you're allocating per task, cherry pick, submit, send and detailed instructions. And we're constantly adding to this. But you can see there are a lot of high page rank websites as we move through the list. And they're all categorized by article directories. You can choose what you want. If it doesn't exist, you add your own. It's as simple as that. You add your own to the system. You create your own world, your own dream. You remember, you're dealing with the people that are your audience. You have to work, go to where they are and put the best offer in front of them and lead them back to your golden frame. This is the whole point of the whole, the whole process. Yeah, and speaking of, speaking of the golden frame, once you've done all this stuff, you know, Matt's already, in just a few minutes, you know, spit out the site, and once the content's there, then you can begin focusing on just that. Then that's when you focus your social media campaigns and all these other things that are out there right now that are important. Now they're put in the proper context because the language, the pain, the painkillers, the problem has been matched, the solution has been matched to the problem. And you know your market incredibly well because you've done research with Kraken, which is vertical market research. You have the most profitable keywords ever drilled out for you in a giant pile because Kraken drilled them out and you've got them all integrated into the site. Okay, so this is a very powerful way to consider everything all at once. So this is really unprecedented. And you know, when Sue and I sat back, you know, five years ago and, and asked ourselves if it was possible to build something like this, I, you know, it's like I really had my misgivings about it was possible. But you know, with uh, Matt and Sue have just done an amazing job of like incorporating all these functional aspects and it. it's really been worth putting the time to be sustainable, you know, to think more sustainably. So once we've got our content built out here, right, then we just order our promotional content. And this is where things get really fun with the whole system because it's super easy to do it. Um, we can basically order a full year's worth of content and assign it to a team if we want to. We can order a week by week. We can order a specific keyword by a specific week through the whole system. It's totally fixed. We can assign writing content to a team member for the articles, 
and at the same time we can actually assign the promotion of that actual article, the publishing of it, to another team member. If it's us, we just assign it to ourselves. So the, the way we're controlling and doing multiple tasks at the same time becomes super easy. So if I assign 10 writing tasks to myself, um, it's got our repurposing cost in over there. So 10 articles is going to cost us 10 bucks per article unit, okay? So when I click assign specific tasks, this is going to assign 10 article directory tasks to myself. Okay, so it's going to fire that back there. When I come back to the screen, you can see we've now got 36 tasks to do. We've ordered 10. That's going to come to our promotional where we actually start writing the promotional content. That's so if you, got, if you guys have clients, you can imagine like how powerful, I've talked to people using this, how powerful it is to be finally, to have somebody working for them that is actually accountable for content costs. And <laughs> that's really just cool. Okay. So you have clicked on the promotional content. This is all the content that's been written. And this is where things get very interesting, right? So as we order more content, you can see we've got our targeted keyword, and then we've got the same keyword over there. What DWS does, as we're ordering content, it rotates through every single article that's written, and it'll start changing up the keywords as we get deeper and deeper into the promotion. Okay? So depending on what keyword we're working on, it'll actually change the keywords that must be written. I can show you a sample of this in the other project. Let's go back to the other project quick and I'll show you a sample of how it's changed it out. <coughs> oh, these are all new projects. Um, let's look at the next lot. Yeah, there we go. We're targeting skip hire. The signed anchor text is cheap skip hire. So there you can see how your portfolio is managed, your anchor text portfolio. Cheap skip hire is a good keyword to have linking back to a page that talks about skip hire. And if we drop into this article, um, what it does is it takes the article from stage four, a primary article, and whatever was written over there, it will actually put it in if there's an article written. So the guy writing the promotional article, you can see the DNA braid. He can see um, exactly what he needs to write. He can write out, but he can always reference back to the primary article that was written if you have put it into DWS, which makes it super, super powerful. And um, with the system, it builds out when you've got your content in, it will actually build out your trackable URL for you. So when there's content that's actually written properly, this gets pre-populated with the actual URL where we actually track what article is written, we track what the primary article is linking to, we track who wrote the article, we track what place it was actually published on, and we can actually track with the PKMM module coming out soon. It's going to tell you a whole story. It's going to say, this person came from this property, they read this specific article, uh, they hit your landing page on this date and time, they went away, they came back three days later again, back to your page and actually bought something. And this is what's going to happen with the promotions. We're going to have a, a complete accountability where we can actually report on how our clients and how people are coming from what locations to us to actually create revenue within our system. And I've not seen a system out there yet that has actually given us the whole story. Not even Google gives you that in analytics where they tell you from point A to point Z, exactly who the person is, how long has it taken them to make a decision, and what the LTV actually is when they actually buy something from you. Do they buy one thing or do they buy more things? And these are the things that we're going to be looking at with the whole system. So when I reverse a bit back from that, typically what happens is we come in here, we create a promotional plan, we say we're going to publish our content, we order our content, our writers write the content, okay? Once it's written, the content is going to get published, and when the person publishes the content, when I hop back to our screen, okay, 
when they publish the content, they'll take the URL. So if they publish it on Ezone articles, they'll take the Ezone article URL and they'll stick that into DWS. Okay? Now DWS automatically builds your RSS feed out, which you can plug into your one feed system. Okay? So he'll take that Ezone article thing, it's a written article and I've published it here. He puts it in, he presses submit. As soon as he presses submit, that's going to broadcast that um, new article to the one feed. The one feed is going to release that and it's going to get propagated throughout the whole web. It's going to publish it everywhere for you instantaneously as soon as that guy presses that button. So if you've got 10 guys working on your project or working on multiple projects, the one feed system which you'll see every year, okay, each project that you have in DWS gets its own unique customized RSS feed out and every piece of promotional content that you put out on the web will be broadcasted across the web through this one feed out, okay? And uh, we talk a lot about that in the training area within our system, okay? In this area, we tell you how to set it up, we explain exactly how it works, we talk about this in detail. And this is how we create the broadcasting network. This is how everything comes together. So from defining the story to writing the story to putting the story online and then to publishing it, the one feed helps us drive traffic back to our website, which then creates the sales and the conversions that we're after. And this is how everything ties together, okay? And after you've gone through the process once or twice, it becomes really, really easy. You saw, for example, how quickly I built out a, a themed website that told a really nice story when we looked at it. And that's, that's the process you go through. It's a repeatable, stackable system, guys. There's nothing more to it, but it's highly, highly, highly controlled. Everything, you've got control of absolutely every single moving part in the system, and you never have to remember anything. It's all there for you. There's, there's nothing more to it. If I want to go to my DNA bread and tweak something, I can tweak it. As soon as I tweak that and I write the next promotion, that tweak I've made over there will adjust automatically through the promotional plan and it will reflect that change on the next broadcast through the web. So the whole system works in a fluid, dynamic movement, okay? And whatever we change up front reflects as we push it out the end. So if we find that our market is tweaking and changing slightly, we can adjust the word verbiage, the word we're using up front here in our braid to accommodate that. So if there's a new buzzword, we can just take that buzzword and slip it in and promote on it and that word will get spread through the web. So this means that we are moving faster than anybody else. We are building sites quicker. Our sites of quality and uh, good structure. They're giving the message we want and we're broadcasting everywhere now with all types of media types. And then Sue was speaking about the video bombing up front. You can do that at this stage every year. But then you can also do it at the end year. And the same applies to a lot of other things we'll be releasing over the next two quarters. So um, that's the system, guys. Um, in this hour and a half that we've been speaking, um, it's probably a little bit of hours, like two hours now. Essentially, in two hours, we've had a great discussion. I've spoken the most, and I do apologize for speaking so much. But I really want you guys to get what DWS is all about. It is a very, very powerful tool. And if you use it, you're going to be surprised at what actually happens. That's me. That's me. You said all I have to say. Um, Russ, Sue, if you've got any final thoughts? I don't know. I think we're pretty good because we went on for a while, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's probably wrap this up. Yeah. We've had one comment about, um, about locales and how to specifically apply this to, to a locale. And I think we should do a webinar that just speaks to locales, uh, both countries as well as um, states and cities, um, yeah, and uh, and talk in depth about how to use this tool because you can use this tool very effectively to do that. But it's a topic in and of itself. Well, we've just mapped it. That, that that whole project we got two thousand keywords we mapped out too. Yeah, that whole thing you've just done. Yeah. You guys, the, 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 the DWS is very flexible and it, it, it molds around and emerges around and actually wraps around what you want to do. So um, 
it doesn't matter if you're going to promote one keyword or if it's local or national or international, that doesn't matter. It's you, you the driver, you create what you want, what your thoughts are, you reflect them into the system and the system will merge it out for you. So you can move and create whatever you want. There is no set rules. You're creating your own environment essentially with this broadcasting network you're building and you will attract the people to you with what you're doing. All right, I would like to wrap up this webinar. And uh, yes, we could obviously, uh, those of you who have been with us a while, understand why our certifications take nine days. We haven't talked about social media. We haven't talked about one web brain to rule them all. We haven't talked about how to thread the left brain and the right brain of Google. That's social media, your circles, as well as the Google legacy on everything that you learned today. Um, you haven't learned how to deal with the, web, the second and the third web rings. So obviously you can get as big as you want. Um, everything that you need to know in the stackable system, the basics of it, the, the framework, the wireframe, Matt's revealed to you today. And obviously you can do this for clients, you can do this for your own business. So we look forward to hearing more from you. Uh, and we also welcome anybody who's new. Uh, we realize that some of this information and maybe some of the language and the verbiage is new. I hope we didn't overwhelm you too much. Just know that we do have a glossary. You can visit themesinglossary.com. We work, we work daily to make sure that we define our terms. So that we're not just making a techno battle so that you understand every step of the way. We do define our terms. And there's much, much more training in our private and proprietary processes on the inside of the members area. So thank you very much. This has been Russell Wright, and Matt was a presenter, and Sue Bell is the ThemeZoom Network Empire General Architect. So any, anything else, guys? I think we should probably hang it up now. Yeah, I think that's um, good. The guys, and there's, we've also got help there, so if you do get stuck and you've not found the information in the, the actual training, um, we always recommend get the training first, but if you do get stuck, ping us on the help desk and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, and um, be sure to call, and you can call Matt at home any time that day. <laughs> <laughs> Good job I don't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a total joke, but you don't. Yeah. Okay. No, seriously, Our, guys. Yeah, we do want to help you though, seriously, so we've got a lot of processes to make sure that we do. And we'll, we look forward to seeing you on the inside. I'm going to hang up now because I have another appointment, and I, I'll talk to you all later. Thank you very much. All right, we, uh, we had one more, a couple of questions actually about certification. So I'm just going to send the link out for certification. And if you want to fill out the, um, the opt-in form there, it'll put you into the um, conversation that we have, and we'll give you more information as... Um, time slots become available. The pricing for certification, uh, we've got, um, we've typically had our nine-day version and we're trying to come up with a five-day version and the pricing on, anything, on everything is um, a little nebulous right at the moment. So um, we'll engage you in a conversation and, and get down to those nitty-gritty details. <clears throat> Any other questions? What's the pricing for, for DWS? Um, where is certification held? Most of the time it's held here in Arizona, um, although we're looking to have one in um, just outside of London in the next couple of months, and, um, and we might have one somewhere else here in America like Vegas or something like that. Something exciting where people can have fun in between frying their brains in class. <laughs> <laughs> um, why is Domain Web Studio not widely known? You know, we've tried to keep it a secret, actually. Um, we've been in we've been kind of... Yeah, we've been in a beta up until this point and not ready for prime time, but we're just starting our marketing launch. You're at the very beginning end of it. Yes, Eve, contact me. Absolutely. Um, what is Kraken? Oh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it needs its uh, whole yeah, own it's webinar, but I'll, I'll give you a quick and dirty on it. Um, this is our market analysis tool. And what it does really well, if you're wanting to dominate something 
larger than a smaller niche, then what Kraken will help you do is take the market apart and show you where the money runs through the different avenues in Kraken, so or in your market. So um, as you create your different themes on this page, this screen here is just really incredible because you can look at um, Kraken uses LSI technology to get you a fairly tightly grouped set of keywords for each parent theme or synonymic set that you're looking at. And so then when you look at this screen, it shows you the basics of all of those different themes. So you can see um, when you look at professional cleaning next to cleaning services, you can see that the size of the conversation in cleaning services is a lot more, it's a magnitude larger than professional cleaning. And yet you can see that the pay-per-click traffic is a magnitude larger than in professional cleaning than it is in cleaning services. So that just that that starts to set up the differences between those two themes right there. One's talked about a whole lot more, and once you know the professional cleaning when they're looking for the professional cleaning terms, they're willing to go for pay-per-click traffic because they're serious about buying stuff. You look at the searches, professional cleaning far outstrips, of course you've got 26 keywords in professional cleaning, only one keyword in cleaning services. That also helps. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll flip it to the Sonomic net so we can see them. Oh, okay, that'd one. be good. Yeah, I haven't drilled out the other one, I just uh, set that theme. That's okay. So that, um, that, that gives a story. That gives a little bit more a better story. So when you when you flip it to synonymic set, then you're just looking at the parent theme and synonyms rather than looking at all of the keywords that sit behind that theme. So now we're basically just comparing those two keywords to each other, and um, and so you can see where that your yearly ORV is a whole lot higher in cleaning services, but the competition is also a whole lot higher in cleaning services. So um, so that's part of what you get to see on this screen is the differences between those themes and then the pie chart up on the top well like if you've got 10 or 15 themes on this screen that pie chart up at the top will tell you who your top competitors are across all those keywords and all those themes so you can really start to see who your dominant market figures are who are your real competitors as you look across your entire market and then if you turn it down to just the synonymic set like what we're looking at here then you're looking at your competitors across just those main terms for this particular market it helps you really tear that market apart and figure out where the opportunities are as well as where the money runs and you look at those things you look at those ideas against what it is that um, what your USP is, what your offering is in the marketplace, and you can really start to see the story quite clearly and understand which aspects of that market you want to incorporate in your website and really hit hard and promote. That generated a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> um, the, va the value of the market is derived from AdWords costs. How is this different from a keyword tool? The, the difference is actually in the LSI technology, the way that we've bound a group of keywords together um, to form a theme. So what you're looking at is a, a set of thematically related terms which tells more of a story than an individual keyword. Um, Market Samurai... Uh, mm, mm. I've used Market Samurai and I haven't been able to extract the same information. In fact, the, there was a little while where my tool was having some problems and I had to resort to other keyword tools and for me it was just painful. But, you know, that's because I'm used to using it. Still unsure on using TLKT to replace the Kraken Blueprint. Yeah, it's, it's, hard, to, um, it's hard to get the, the same effect out of TLKT when you're really used to using Kraken. Um, as chalk and cheese, to be honest, eh? um, just for example over here, we can really see what's happening on this, and it's it's not actually looking at this keyword, but a keyword in a grid. Yeah, this is just a top level overview. That the tool goes so much deeper right. than um, what what um, we actually just seeing here. This is just the the top level overview. We still can drill down into this, and it really starts telling you a, a true story. So, for example, if we we drill into professional cleaning. We could actually go into the, the the missed opportunities. Who are the ranked domains? We can see how the language is set up, and uh, on the 
the vertical market, we can see um, who's actually owning the spaces, how much money is flowing through there. So let's say, let's look at this cleanitup.co.uk. What are they actually ran for across the vertical? So they, 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 they're ranking up. That tells you how much the keyword's worth. And if you put your own domain in, you can actually see all the missed opportunities that you actually are losing out on where you may be on the second or third page. You can see how much money you're throwing away. Yeah. So the, the tool's super, super powerful, and it gives you a, a complete holistic market overview. This is what I said earlier. It's not a keyword tool. It's a market analysis tool. You analyze that you want to enter. Would, um, would you go back just one screen for a second? in the market before you start. Sorry. Yep. The, yeah, by going back into the, do you see the bubble charts? Yeah, yeah the, the chart up there at the top, the, the market strategy summary, like that, that chart tells me in a glance that there's nobody dominating this market. If there's no um, circles in the upper right hand quadrant, that means nobody is systematically going after this market and is doing a lot of deep linking, and I can take it. I know that just by looking at this chart, I can take this entire theme. Yeah, that's what I said when I, when I took that. I just took a glance at Clacker and I said, this, this market's open, we can smash it. Yeah. Um, this tells us very quickly, when you're familiar with these type of tools, when you go back to the other tools, we're not putting the other tools down. Um, it's just we, we've got different requirements and we're looking for different bits of information. And if you don't know about the information, and you don't know that it's available, then you won't want it. <laughs> Once you realize it's there and you actually use the tools they give it to you, when you go back to a normal keyword tool after using a tool like Kraken, it's, it's a, a very unsatisfying experience. That's the only way I can say. It yeah, actually becomes exactly. quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Is there training on this tool? Is that Kraken? Is there training on Kraken? Um, in certification, we cover all the tools. We, we cover TLKT, Kraken, DWS. We, we do it all. We take you through the whole thing plus more. And, um, you know, I had a, I, I originally had the members area um, geared toward Kraken, but a lot of guys found Kraken just to be um, too complicated to be able to get in and do what they needed to do and get back out again. So I changed phase two back to TLKT, but underneath phase two, there is still an entire page for Kraken, and I've got in there how you can use it, a set of videos in there about how to use it with Domain Web Studio to, um, it doesn't go into as much depth as I could about taking apart the market, but it's pretty good. I can find a link for that, hang on a second. Yeah, guys, if you work your way through the training area, um, there's a ton of information. Like I said, with, with the net, what we spent the last, um, just coming back to the question, why doesn't everybody know about it? In the last year and a half, we've been creating the stackable system. And in order to get the stackable system right, we've had to do a lot of R&D and experimenting. On top of that, we've had to create a training area that deals with every single node throughout the stackable process. And we've had to build the software so that it actually supports going through the stackable system. And it makes each part of doing the process easy and understandable so anybody can get it. Um, the, the guys that have been with DWS from the alpha stage when we first came up with the idea, um, they've gone through the whole iteration, guys like Tora and a, a, a whole bunch of other guys. They've seen how the whole tech has evolved and how everything started coming together. And it was very complex in the beginning, but now the guys seeing this for the first time now, it's, it's completely refined and much, much easier. Plus, we're coming back with a whole bunch of new things for for the community. So we're constantly developing um, the, the, the software, the training, to really refine the stackable system so as much as possible can be automated where it needs to be automated, but you're working on the key areas where you have to work on them. Okay. Yeah, I'm cracking. Uh, Kraken, uh, it, it isn't complex, it's just understanding that you're not looking for keywords, you're looking at what's happening in the market, that's the biggest take from Kraken. Yeah. If you're looking for keywords, it's going to drive you insane, but when you're actually looking, okay, what businesses are, am I up against in this marketplace, then everything becomes very simple to understand. That's the trick to Kraken. 
Yeah, exactly. And it's not that the keywords aren't there. Um, you can still get plenty of keywords out of it, but it's if you're trying to use it like a keyword tool, you'll be very disappointed. Yeah, if you look here, you can see this is what we're looking at. We're looking at who the companies are that are owning this place yeah. and how much money are they sucking out of the full market share. That's our mindset, it, where the money flows to the market. It's not where the keywords flow to the market, it's where the money is and who owns the money and how strong are they. Because the stronger they are, the more it's going to cost you to compete. And this is what you want to know up front before you start entering into a project. And this is why a lot of people fail online. It's because they enter into markets blind and then they lose their pants because they're paying for all sorts of things where they shouldn't be doing it. I have the, that same, there was one person who was complaining about the, the link not working, I think it's because they're not logged into the members area. I have that same thing, I think on the blog, let me find that. <coughs> yeah, like I showed you guys earlier with Crack, and if you want keywords, you can get them. Um, like I uh, just exported 200 odd keywords out. And these are keywords that have gone through a process of roughly cracking analysis about 80,000 keywords to give you the story of the market. But then it also gives you the top 200, 300 keywords that are mostly the most important keywords in that market space. And I've taken those and I've pulled them into the keyword decision in DWS and we've used them over here. So you can see over here we had a keyword grid of like 700 keywords on this project, on the the project from from the the exercise today, ended up working with about 500 keywords, and you can actually come and pull in and take out as much as you want as you're working through the process from Kraken or the last keyword tool. Um, uh, will will tell you ever change from Broadmatch? Yes, uh, we've. Uh, Sue's busy working on it at the moment to get it switched to phrase match. Yeah. What's a Kraken Blueprint, Verma? Um, Kraken Blueprint is the actual plan that comes out of Kraken that generates a blueprint. Verma stands for Vertical Online Market Analysis. That's the process you go through when you analyze your market to map out your blueprint. Um, DWS is essentially a, um, I don't know what to call it, Sue from the original Kraken Blueprint process. It's it's, like um, the, it's sort of a replacement for the Kraken Blueprint process. And the, the Kraken Blueprints, the difference is, is that Kraken will automatically generate the blueprints for you. Where Domain Web Studio, it's a manual process. You select each keyword that you want to use. And um, um, in the future, I'm sure we'll hybridize both of those into one application, but at the moment, they're quite different. And the downer on the Kraken Blueprints at the moment is that we don't, we haven't upgraded it to use the Silo Blueprint module yet. So you can get an HTML version out of Kraken, but you can't get the, um, you can't, the XML. yeah, you can't export it easily into a blue into a blog at this juncture. So most people I think are probably going to be more comfortable using the blueprint function in Domain Web Studio unless you're um, unless you're already really familiar with Kraken blueprints I'd probably steer you away from that option. <coughs> yeah and um, with DWS you, you build out your whole site in the in the system and you export it out and get it live instantly. Um, that's typically the idea behind what you've done. And then from that point, everything's you got to archive up everything. Everything's managed for you. Yes, you can get a keyword list from either. Um, what you want to do in Kraken is you want to flip it to the advanced tab, and uh, that'll get you a, a longer keyword list. Um, the, the front page on Voma is more the vertical market terms, the keywords that are most important to the market, but then there's another tab that'll get you... Um, Show all. Yeah, it'll, it'll get you the less, lesser used um, 
keywords, and so you get some more long tails, sometimes some quite decent long tails in that list. Yeah, um, you can also use other tools um, with our importer, as long as it's a CSV file and you've got the basic competing pages, phrase match, search volume phrase match, and your search volume uh, either monthly or daily, um, you can actually build it in. Um, we've added a whole bunch of tools that are commonly used by people here. Yeah, if you've got a specific tool that's new in the market and you'd like to use it, and it has those three parameters, i.e. keyword, competing pages phrase match, search volume phrase match, and you indicate whether it's month or daily search volume, we can add it rapidly to the system so you can just take those exports as a CSV and move them straight into the system. It's not a, not a problem. <laughs> TLKT, can I answer this one? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, check uh, Kraken. Kraken, like I keep on saying, it's a market analysis tool, and the keywords that we get back are slightly different because we're looking at it from a market perspective. Um, if you think of the market as a big apple pie, we're looking at the whole apple pie with Kraken, and we're saying this apple pie: John owns slice A, Bob owns slice B, Sue owns slice C, Russ owns slice B. Whereas um, TLKT is a keyword tool. It goes and gets all the keywords and the keywords that are used. And it, it, it gets back keywords. It brings you a list of keywords. Now with TLKT, you can take the keywords from TLKT and you can import them into Kraken and run them through the analysis and get the same market analysis data back off the keywords you got from TLKT, which opens up different ideas and you find also other uh, opportunities if, uh, if you look at it that way. Um, so a lot of people wanted TLKT when Sue and that built TLKT it was purely more, I think Sue was it from just people wanting a keyword tool, um, Kraken was just too much for them? Well, yeah, so there's two things, one with, um, with the idea of Kraken being a theme, we strip away a lot of the keywords that are brought back as Matt was saying, like we start with 60 to 80,000 keywords in a drill in Kraken and you end up with less than 200 and that's because um, we get a, rid of all of the keywords that don't meet certain qualifications for a market analysis perspective. They have to have so much traffic, they have to have so much cost per click, it has to be relevant to the parent term or the synonyms and in TLKT we don't do any of that. We just bring back a huge group of keywords that are relevant, well that were found while we were looking for the seed term. So you get back a lot more diversity, you get back some interesting really tangent ideas, uh, you even get back some actual garbage because that's what you normally get with a keyword tool, right? You get the entire gambit. So we had people who were looking just simply for more keyword diversity than the themes that were provided in Kraken. So this, it just, it's got two radically different perspectives on the keyword market. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? All right. I'm going to hit the stop recording then. We'll be on for a few more minutes. <laughs>